uh, since it is just past uh, 7.30, we are in the presence of a quorum. I would call this uh, meeting of the Finance Committee to order. Uh, I guess the uh, main top, well, we should start off with uh, any public comment. The main purpose of the meeting tonight is to review some of these uh, Warren articles. There's no public comments, and we'll start off. Uh, we, um, I have a little scorecard based on the uh, the, the special town meeting warrant uh, listing the 13 Warren articles. Uh, we're not going to take them in order, but we're going to uh, start with the uh, collective bargaining agreements, article number uh, four and five uh, for the police superior officers in the highway municipal properties and cemetery with uh, Marianne. Uh, screw our timing totally up, Mr. Chairman. I thought you were going in order. So I, let's get my notes again. Okay. I, I do want to point out, uh, we had a meeting with the moderator this morning. He wanted me to let the FinCom know that, uh, I know you guys have already dealt with Article 1, but our, you've heard about Article 1. Right. We, we met with him. Yes. Or he met with us. Is, uh, the moderator wants to limit the whole discussion, et cetera, of Article 1 to one hour. <laughs> Do we have to go that long? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Chang might take care of it. Or if you're not ready, we can no, start. No, actually, uh, I'm, I think we're good. Um, this is uh, probably easier if I just talk about the two of them together because sure. there's a lot of symmetry between them. Um, Article 4 is uh, a, a three year settlement um, with the uh, superior officers of the police uh, department, those are uh, uh, the sergeants and the lieutenants. Uh, Article 5 is uh, a settlement uh, with uh, a union known as AFSME that represents highway, municipal property, and cemetery workers. Um, the, uh, uh, the settlement with the superiors, once again, is a three-year uh, a three-year settlement uh, effective July 1 of 2015 and, and going to uh, 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 and expires in FY18. Uh, the terms are uh, first year, which under the statute, the town meeting has to appropriate, is a 2% COLA. Uh, second year, the agreement is a 2.5% COLA. And the third year is a 2.75% COLA. Uh, also uh, embedded in that agreement is um, uh, we incorporated some of the language from, if you recall, uh, a year ago at town meeting, when, when, the, when town meeting authorized us to file legislation uh, to uh, remove the police department from civil service. Uh, we had some agreements uh, that related to education and some of that thing. So those items have been incorporated from the agreement as well. And we also have a commitment from both this unit and the other unit that they will agree to uh, uh, formal coalition bargaining uh, that will relate to the, uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act and, and so-called Cadillac tax. We're going to have to address the Cadillac tax issue. Uh, and so uh, as part of the settlement, they have agreed to, uh, to uh, go through that process. Okay. In terms of the, uh, uh, the AFSCME unit, the highway, municipal uh, uh, property, and cemetery unit, uh, once again, three-year agreement uh, uh, starting July 1st, 2015. Uh, 2% in the first year. Here we have to uh, seek funding 2.5% in the second year, 25 in the third year. Uh, a couple other significant changes in that contract is we have moved away from a um, percentage based longevity payment to the, uh, to the employees to a flat rate. So that will save us uh, some money over, over the long run. Also, they have agreed to. Uh, uh, participate in coalition bargaining on, on health insurance, which we hope to start probably in the first of the year. And, and finally, uh, we reach an agreement that they will not uh, be able to smoke e-cigarettes on town property or in, in town vehicles. So uh, for the, uh, okay. for the uh, superior officers, uh, uh, the appropriation amount for, the, for fiscal year 16 is 18820 
we are suggesting that that be a transfer from the FY16 budget, so wouldn't be coming out of free cash, it'd be coming out of the operational budget. And similarly, uh, the AFSCME unit is 47777 once again, to be funded out of the, the uh, operational budget and not free cash. <clears throat> Anyone uh, have any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Doug? Uh, what is the actual increase in cost of living that drives the logic for the two to two and a half percent increases in pay? Uh, oh, Mary, you recall that? I um, the uh, over our labor council had said it's 4.34 uh, percent. Um, the, the increase uh, of cost of living the, for these employees. The uh, CPIU over um, average three-year period. That was per our labor council. So it's 4.3 over three years. So one. Correct. 1.4, let's say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, I think Steve. Steve. Uh, as far as the coalition bargaining goes, is it limited to the Cadillac tax, or can we reopen um, other aspects of uh, the health insurance? We can reopen all of it. I mean, that's we've kind of left the vague Cadillac tax, tax being the kind of main impetus, but we've left it vague. Margaret. Yeah, this, I just had a question about the timing. Um, you know, typically we'll, we're seeing these in the annual meetings, and I'm just wondering why we, we have this now. Is just because we can, or is there something pressing? We should have um, seen it in the annual meeting in April. So, it, and so, what happened there? Well, I mean, it, you know, it takes time to negotiate issues, and uh, you know, it just, it just takes time to do these. We still have two other contracts we haven't settled yet. So, it's just a delayed negotiation. That's what you're saying. Oh, uh, well, I mean, there's a, yeah, I wouldn't say delayed. I mean, it, it's uh, we we had a series of bargaining sessions, probably seven, eight, nine, ten, but. You know, between their schedules, our schedules, attorney schedules, it just takes some time to, to meet. So when did the when were the negotiations finalized? Um, uh, boy, I don't remember now. No, they were in the summer. It was, uh, yep, it was uh, August, <coughs> end of August, beginning of September. But didn't ask me just ratify last. Well, week. they they voted to ratify. We we finished the settlement, uh, you know, in the summer. But we had told them because we were under the impression there would not be a fall town meeting, so. We weren't in a real rush to sign the MOA uh, at that point because we thought this would be going to uh, the, sp the spring town meeting. I see. I got I to gotta say, under the statute, once you reach an agreement, you have to bring it to the next town meeting. So if we had an agreement that it's a fall town meeting was scheduled, it has have to, to be there. So, but you said they just signed it recently? The AFSCME signed it. We actually signed it today. Okay. Because I'm just wondering, and this is, this is you know, if, if you've ever heard me talk about stuff like this before, it's a pet peeve of mine. Why, why it's not in here? Why the terms that you just laid out to me are not in the town warrant? So it sounds like it might be because they didn't um, sign, so you couldn't finalize them before you printed the warrant. But I think in general, it really bothers me that we don't have numbers in most of the appropriations warrants that we, you know, warrant um, items that we have. There's just no numbers in there. And so as a resident, if you're trying to look at this, it's very, very confusing to understand. I have no idea what I'm voting on. I just don't. I don't know what the budgetary effects are. I don't. And one thing I've suggested in the past, um, you know, because I know that certain budget items, this potentially or other budget items that change from time to time, we all know sometimes they don't get finalized until the last minute and you have to change the warrant. Um, or you've already you've already printed the warrant, but there should be a place you know somewhere very easy to find. There should be a URL published in the warrant that tells you where to go, so you can find the latest numbers. Because as a citizen, it's just very difficult to to understand what this means. No response. Nothing. <laughs> I thought there was a state. <laughs> no, I'm just curious if you had a reaction. If, if it's hard, I just don't know why it's so hard to do. I mean, if we're well, trying I mean, to be. I think this is very typical of what every city and town does. Uh, you know, especially with labor agreements, they're very, you know, a lot of these do get settled the last time. Uh, the, the motions are really what counts uh, when it comes to town meeting. You remember, the warrant is just a warning of what the agenda items are. 
Right, but the, but you're trying. If, if we let's not let's try to like break out <laughs> of what other towns do that aren't affected. This is not an effective warrant to be transparent to the people. It's not effective because people can't see what you're trying to pass. They can't see it. So already the language is a little bit antiquated. Already the language is kind of legalized, legalese type stuff. And you know, if you're an average citizen, this is you're going to say, why would I? I have no idea what this means to me. So I just, again, would encourage us to think above and beyond what other towns do and post a URL in the warrant. If we can't publish the number right away in the warrant, let's post a URL in the warrant that directs them um, to whatever the latest number or, in this case, agreement is. <clears throat> Anyone else? Doug? I reinforce that. I mean, you know, we have a $94 million budget on both sides. Uh, people make up 70% of it. If there's any, if there's any, if there's a two and a two and a half percent bump, if there's any other changes in benefits that affect our taxes, then we should be fulsome in the detail. And if these things arrive in sort of semi-abstracted fashion in the warrant, um, I think the comment that's been made just now is correct. You cannot reasonably expect Joe Citizen to understand what's put in front of him. And they're, they're, they're voting on 70% of their budget. So if anything, we have an obligation to achieve great clarity. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's once again, we're, we'll come to a special town meeting that was supposed to have one item now has 13, and we're going to come up with a, you know really an uninformed uh, electorate, uninformed um, citizenry, and uh, most of these things will be voted on by a handful of people, special interest groups. And that's you know something we've got to improve this process in the future. That's all there is to it. Do we, uh, do we need to build on these now, or? Sure. I, Mr. Well, Chairman, I would move that we recommend Article 4. All in favor? Nice. Or do I hear a second? Second. OK. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So the Finance Committee recommends Article 4. Mr. Chairman, I would move the Finance Committee recommend Article 5. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The uh, Article 5 is recommended. Thank you. Um, now we'll probably move on to Article 6. These are not in order. Uh, it's just as a courtesy to the people that are here uh, <coughs> regarding the special tax assessment. And Richard, um, is it El El Elliot? Elliot. Elliot. So if I might, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Richard Elliot. He is the Chief Operating Officer of Associated Environmental Systems, currently of AIR. Uh, we started uh, meeting with Richard probably uh, sometime in July uh, as he was uh, indicating his company had an interest in uh, East Post Office Square, uh, which is a currently vacant building down at the end of Post Office Square, uh, almost across from the Post Office. Uh, we've been meeting with Richard over, uh, over, over uh, you know, for a good three or four months now. Uh, we started to uh, become acquainted with some of the uh, the new uh, the new uh, uh, economic development tools the the state passed about a year ago, which really creates what's called an EDIP, an economic development incentive program that the state, as well as uh, 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 the business and, and the town, would have to sign into to get certain incentives. So uh, I think I'd like to have Richard just walk through what his company is, what they do, and then we can talk a little more about the EIP and, and the tax incentive. Thank you very much. This is not really convenient for you guys. It's really good for me, though. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> I apologize for those of you who have seen the Lord's last majority of this probably two or three times. Um, <clears throat> but I've basically recycled what you've already seen, so I <laughs> apologize in advance. Um, first of all, thanks for giving me an opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, I, I'll get right into it, and please feel free to stop me um, if you have any questions. Um, our company, Associated Environmental Systems, is a 55-year-old company, a Massachusetts company. Um, what we do is basically we design and engineer environmental test chambers. Um, for you, for those of you who are not familiar with it, about what it is, uh, basically imagine uh, a machine that combines an oven and a freezer, and uh, and and humidity. And those machines are used by many companies all around the world to basically uh, test their products, physical products, in an environment that mimics real use. So we have ovens that can go as high as 200 degrees Celsius and down to minus 70. Um, and so, and, and of course are able to produce 100% humidity. Um, basically this is what a test chamber looks like. Uh, there are various types. Um, they're, they're actually uh, extremely difficult uh, to manufacture because they have to be 100% uh, hermetic, even though some of them are as big as um, a large house. Um, and you see here a few examples. The one on the right there is at uh, Cisco in California. They have uh, 180 of those machines in one, one building. Um, on the left there is what we call a thermal shock, so that, that is literally an oven at the top, a freezer at the bottom, and basically an elevator between the two. And it allows the product to go from very hot to very cold very, very quickly in a matter of a second. And then we also do walk-in rooms. Uh, we're currently making uh, chambers for Tesla where they can literally drive a car uh, into the chamber, expose it to a very deep freeze, and then drive it straight out into the, the Arizona desert in very hot temperatures to see how the cars will react to extreme temperature uh, changes. Um, in terms of our current locations, we currently occupy two locations in Ayer, um, north of here. Um, and, uh, you know, the second location was basically created earlier this year. Uh, to respond to the fact that we're growing at such speed that we just couldn't meet the demand uh, in one location. <coughs> uh, we currently operate three locations. Um, obviously our factory uh, in Ayer. We have a large uh, sales and service center in Santa Clara, California to service our Silicon Valley customers. And another one in Michigan which basically services the, the automotive industry. Um, this is this is some of our customers. Um, some of them are not listed here. For example, the U.S. government. We actually work with uh, all five branches of the Army. Uh, we work with NASA. Um, you know, basically um, most of the top 500 uh, companies in the U.S. Um, one of, one of the things that makes us different is we're the only company in the world that can actually do a fully customized chamber. And so customers come to us and tell us, you know, we need something that's 30 by 28. Nobody else in the world does that. We can actually do it. Um, and we do that by using very advanced methods in terms of uh, computer-aided design. Um, computer-guided laser cutting, robotic welding, and so forth. Um, another thing that really differentiates us is, is the fact that we have evolved into a technology company, not just as a manufacturing company. And uh, for those of you who have heard you know, the term, the Internet of Things, you know, it basically refers to the ability to control something remotely uh, through the cloud or through the Internet. And so we've 
Um, we've designed, for example, on your left there is an iPad and a customer can actually see how their machines are doing remotely. Uh, but it also gives us the ability to see what the customer's machine is doing and do preventative, uh, tech preventative measures when they run into trouble. Um, just to give you an idea of what we're proposing to do uh, versus what we currently have, our current facilities are basically a combination of 25,000 square feet. Uh, we're running into a lot of power limitations. Um, it's very hard to manage two facilities. Um, we're literally running out of space, so it's very cramped for our staff. And, and it's also, interestingly enough, north of 495, it's very hard to recruit um, high-tech staff, mostly people coming from Cambridge and you know the notorious areas for high-tech. Um, the facilities that we're contemplating here uh, in Acton is, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is a former facility of Milton Roy. Um, it's 50,000 square feet of manufacturing and offices, but it also has, has 20,000 square feet of office, office space above, uh, which we, we intend to lease out. We, we, we don't really have a need for that. Um, it's right next to the uh, Acton Water District access. Um, in fact, the water district has a deed of access uh, through the through the um, through the property. Um, it has ample parking for all of our staff, which can also accommodate our growth or potential growth. Um, the utilities are uh, very adequate, and and it's obviously a much more pleasant environment for our, for our staff than where we are right now. Um, in terms of numbers, um, which is appropriate for this, uh, for this body, um, we currently have 55 staff uh, combining both um, office and, and, and work area, uh, 25,000 square feet as I mentioned, and our capacity is about 50 units per month. Now, you know, some units can, can be a million dollar machine and others are $10,000, right? So um, it's really across all. Where we're going uh, at our current rate is to about 120 staff. Um, we're going to be needing about 50,000 square feet, which this suits perfectly. Uh, going to a capacity of 120 units per month. And so the, the total property acquisition cost is about two and a half million dollars. So we're planning on about a quarter of a million in capital improvement another quarter million in capital equipment. And so it's, it's about a total investment of $3 million. Um, in terms of, you know, where we are in terms, you know, as, as Manager Ludo has mentioned, you know, we've been working uh, together and trying to, uh, you know, create an environment where it's uh, an easy decision for us to, uh, uh, to move to Acton as compared to other locations that we're contemplating. And uh, uh, we've already worked with, um, with Brian on, on, uh, on the tax assessment uh, uh, to try to get it to match uh, closely to the purchase price. Uh, we've already obtained a zoning determination um, and, and an occupancy permit. And uh, we've also worked with the building department to get a preliminary review, uh, which turned out to be uh, uh, very good. And by very good, I mean it's going to take very, very little work uh, to get the building to be where it needs to be. Um, what is pending is why we're here today is the special tax assessment. Um, of course, we're, we continue to work with, uh, with uh, town management you know, for the permitting process. And then we're also working with uh, the water department and the uh, school district in terms of the access road and the parking lots around the property, which have sustained quite a bit of damage over the years. Um, I know that uh, Manager Udu will go into that, but uh, what, in terms of the, the special, the estimated annual tax assessment for the property uh, is about $50,000. Uh, 
Um, the four-year impact of the special tax assessment is uh, $125,000, and uh, we have, uh, I have obtained from our CEO um, to make sure that uh, this amount is actually uh, specifically earmarked for uh, various improvements that will make us actually, uh, uh, let's say, a better power usage citizen in terms of uh, developing a heat pump, um, looking at developing a solar array on the part of the property that is not uh, buildable. And, uh, and we're actually working with Tesla to build uh, electrical storage so that we can actually accumulate uh, power as opposed to put it back into the grid so that whatever power we produce, we can keep it and use it as we need it. In terms of where we see AES as a contribution to the uh, Acton and Massachusetts community, uh, well, the first thing is obviously reviving a facility that's been dormant for 18 months now. Um, we are an extremely clean manufacturing operation, uh, producing virtually zero waste. Um, none of the key components we used are considered hazardous. Um, 75% of our dollars are spent in Massachusetts as we focus solely on local suppliers and 95% of our products are sold outside of Massachusetts. Um, currently growing from 55 to 120 employees and uh, as I mentioned before moving to Acton would allow us to uh, recruit more high-tech staff which is something that we need as we develop more um, uh, more cloud-related capabilities, and uh, and and also um, we have uh, started a program in-house to try to assess um, which of our staff is actually going to be making use of public transportation versus driving their car in, and uh, it's looking quite good. We actually have a lot of people coming from the west and uh, and and from the south. And so um, that's something that we look forward actually to, uh, to be able to offer. Um, we're, we're actually uh, working with the Acton School District to facilitate the use of our parking facilities for school bus uh, use. They used to do that mm. and then that was uh, stopped. Um, we've assessed that the current cost to the school district is $22,000 a year to store the buses. And uh, in addition, it takes them about 30 minutes per driver per day of payroll uh, to drive to the current lot, which, you know, if my calculations are right, is about an additional $4,000 a month um, in payroll cost. Uh, that could be avoided if the school district actually opted to uh, park their buses um, in, in our parking lot. Um, we've also discussed um, with the school district at their request um, to actually lease a portion of our second floor office space uh, which I mentioned earlier we're planning to lease anyway. Um, they currently have their transportation department housed in uh, like temporary cubicles that are sitting outside um, and um, we've uh, offered them a rate actually of 995 per square foot including all utilities which is about 20 percent below uh, the ongoing rate in Acton. And, uh, and, and of course the balance of uh, the upstairs office space um, is going to be leased out and, and I know there's been the idea of a senior center has been uh, kind of bandied around town and uh, I've kind of put it on the table and said you know we'd be happy to consider actually uh, using that space for that. At, at the same type of rate, which I think is very advantageous, um, and it has the it has the benefit of having plenty of parking right in front. It's um, wheelchair accessible. You know, it's got. I mean, it's to me that it's got a lot of advantages, and it requires almost no work uh, to make it usable. And that's uh, that's the end of my presentation. So I'm happy to answer any questions. It's interesting. Thank you. Sure.
Steve? Uh, got a couple questions. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Noon. Sure. Um, so is your metal cutting done with lasers? Yes. Okay. No, so there's no solvents, no cutting fluids, no electroplating, no no anything like that no going on? No plating, no solvents. Um, it's uh, obviously the, it uses the argon gas. Okay. Only worried about things that can get in the water. <laughs> no, and we've already we've already gone through a full assessment actually with the um, uh, uh, that, that was one of the reasons Richard first came uh, to meet with us was it is in zone two of the Conant well. So uh, we've looked at all his material safety data sheets. Uh, he's, he's got quite a, quite a portfolio of them and, and it was determined by the health department there was nothing of any, any consequence there. Okay. I'm good. Doug? What is your gross annual payroll currently? Uh, Sure, I'm allowed to share that, and I don't <laughs> take that the wrong <laughs> way. Give me a wag. Um, <laughs> I mean, you just say gross revenues? No, 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 no. no. Just, I, I want to know <laughs> that. So. Job. Well, we, we, to tell you the truth, I didn't prepare for that uh, for this question, uh, so I don't mean to punt it, but I'd be happy to check with our CEO if it's okay to share that. And then to you, you pay you pay uh, payroll taxes, right? Yes, of course. And that's a matter of public record. Sure. So if he doesn't say I can have it, then I just look it up. That's <laughs> as I said. I'm I'm totally taken by surprise. I wasn't expecting this question, and I apologize. Um, we currently have, um, interestingly, about half and half. That means half of our staff is what you would call white collar staff or office staff. Most of them are engineers, um, whether they're um, electronic engineers or refrigeration or electrical. Um, and the other half is obviously our workers. I would say that the average, the average hourly rate of the workers is around 25 to $28 uh, an hour. Most of them these days are doing uh, sometimes as much as two hours of overtime every day. Um, so I can I can safely say that it's um, we have no minimum wage um, <laughs> staff. Let me put it this way. If I, if I change the question and I say, um, would you say that the average compensation per capita is something on the order of eighty thousand dollars? No, I would say it's probably closer to fifty, fifty-five thousand okay. dollars. Even yeah, when that would be my guess. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Chairman. Nathan. Uh, you have fifty-five employees now. You're projecting to go to one hundred and twenty. What is the impetus for that growth? Do you have Do you have people already identified that you intend on hiring, or is the one hundred and twenty what could be carried in the fifty thousand square foot facility? Do you no, have plans that's to get plan. to that? That's our actual plan. So if you saw, we're currently producing about fifty units a month. Mm -hmm. Our plan is actually go to one hundred and twenty a month. Based on new contracts, new Based customers. Based on the fact that we just picked up uh, Apple as a customer. Okay. Uh, we picked up Tesla. We picked up Cisco. Um, we have opened a uh, sales office in California for the last three years and it takes that long to really you know get into the game most of the big players are either Italian or German um, and and another one that's Taiwanese that's uh, trying to get into the market and so we've we've really um, I mean we just delivered 80 chambers to Apple you know and they're talking about 500 of them um, the, the growth in this business is absolutely astronomical. And uh, AES has been a very small player um, in this market. So for many years, it was a two, three million dollar company. Right? Um, now it's gonna be multiples of that um, as we grow. But it's entirely based on actual demand from our customers and what they're telling us we should get prepared for. That sounds great. I do have a follow-up, though, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, you had mentioned that a, a certain number of your employees would be looking to use public transportation. Have you? Is there any concern or worry that uh, 
when you move a headquarters, uh, every time a company I've worked for has moved headquarters, people have said, you know, don't like the new, don't like the new location, don't like the new commute, I'm going to find something else. No, you, are, you gonna lose any, are you going to lose any attrition? Are you going to have any attrition because of a change in, change in location? I can't be categoric about this, <coughs> but we've done a survey. We've actually taken all of the staff on a field trip to the factory to show them you know, what we're talking about. Um, I can say with certainty that 95%, I'm sure, will follow us. It's only, technically, it's only eight minutes from our current facility. So, I mean, we're, we're going from a B-class factory environment to an A-class factory environment with air conditioning, which we don't have right now, with heat that works when we can. Sort of ironic, right? Yeah. <laughs> have, like, freezing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the, the worst job in the factory is the oven in summer. <laughs> but, you know, right. in winter, everyone <laughs> tends to want to volunteer for that right. job. So, you know, so. <laughs> Margaret? Um, so, Richard? Is yes. That right? Yeah, thank you so much. I, I um, you know, as somebody that's always been very excited and, and very much wanting to um, increase uh, our commercial base in town. I think this is great. I'm, I think it's wonderful that you want to come to Acton, and it seems like a very interesting and sound business. Um, so I think you've made a very compelling case for your, what your business is. I guess my question is more to the town manager and the board of selectmen, because I think the concern I have about this is just sort of a process one, which is just like, how do we, it just feels like this is a little bit of a one-off um, in terms of granting this company a tax, um, uh, a tax uh, abatement, abatement. Um, what do they call that, STA, is that what it was called? Special, like Special tax assessment, assessment. Yeah. okay. So, <laughs> Less taxes is what we so, call it. <laughs> um, so I guess because, you know, one of the things that, um, in a different role I've done in town is, is trying to promote, um, uh, or, or at least in a planning sense, figure out ways that we can do better do economic development. And um, Doug Tyndall over here is on the Economic Deve Development Committee. Um, but I don't feel like there's been a really organized effort um, put forth, any plan for economic development put forth. Um, that would sort of identify certain opportunities and identify different types of companies that we'd want to attract and therefore offer special tax uh, abatements to. So I guess I'm a little bit, I just don't want it to be sort of this precedent setting that we just sort of are opportunistic. Um, and I don't think opportunism is always bad, but I think it's better to be strategic. Um, and then when opportunities come up, you can have a, a way to evaluate those opportunities. So. Um, but I don't know because I wasn't privy to all the discussions and how this was made, and maybe th there was there was more strategy involved than I than I than I know. So I'm just curious from the selectman's point of view and the um, and town manager or whoever wants to address that. Well, I think before we answer that, maybe uh, we talk about the process a little bit of, of how this whole thing kind of comes together. Uh, because as I said at the outset, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, the legislature passed. Uh, um, uh, an economic uh, uh, development package that enabled towns like Acton to have tools like this that we never really had before. Uh, so uh, the way the process works is this this has to be considered a project. It has to be approved by the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council, which is a, a, a state board. So uh, Richard has made a preliminary application uh, for the EDIP program. And uh, in order to qualify uh, for that program, there are like four criteria, and you have to meet one of the criteria. And in talking with our regional representative of, of Mass Office of Business Development, uh, our best uh, criteria is, is, is the creation of new jobs. So it's not the 55 base jobs that Richard is bringing over. It's the 65 jobs that would be uh, brought over. So um, that's, sorry, so that's what allows them to meet the criteria the state exactly. sets. Okay. Exactly. So in exchange, in order, uh, and, and we'll, we'll talk about the, 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 the kind of the structure of the SDA in a minute, but in order to receive the, 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 the special tax assessment, uh, we, uh, the town, uh, through the selectmen and, and, uh, and AES, 
will have to have a contract that articulates goals, and that goals will obviously be the creation of those jobs. So if those jobs aren't created in kind of the year, year or two year window that Richard was talking about, there's no, there's no tax incentive. It goes away. So it, it's really, uh, it, it's kind of holding their feet to the fire that they will, uh, they will uh, uh, provide what, what we've agreed to. So, uh, you know, I, I, granted, Margaret, there was no real plan on this. You know, sometimes things pop out of the blue and you have to deal with them. And, um, you know, I looked upon this when I first met with Richard as a, a very exciting business. I mean, a business, I think, that would fit well in the community, does some very innovative and interesting things, and uh, something I think that would, would, would benefit everybody. I mean, one... Uh, and I'm trying to remember where I heard this, but I think it was Bill Mullen's brother, John, the professor at UMass, that, that, that said something to the effect that for every dollar spent locally, it regenerates itself like eight or nine times or something like that. So with 125 employees in town, obviously they're going to be, uh, they're gonna be uh, uh, doing some uh, consuming themselves. As, as Richard said, most, uh, you know, they try to do uh, buy locally for their, for their goods uh, and services that they provide. So, I mean, I think we looked at it as, one, um, filling a building that's been vacant that is in zone two, so there's some limitations as to what can be done in that building, uh, the generation of, of new jobs, the fact that they want to be a very green community, I think was very, our green building uh, was very enticing to the Board of Selectmen, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the way, way we looked at it. Now, uh, you know, some of these tools, are, uh, I would say some other communities have probably misused. Uh, 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 when we were doing some research, uh, the town of Drake it gave a, a, a tax incentive to a donut shop, for example. Uh, now that might be very important to them, I, I don't know. But, uh, uh, <laughs> That's a special interest. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I think that... Uh, it's close to the calories. You know, as, 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 as we've talked, uh, you know, each... Is that near the police station? I mean, each yes. business that we would can work I with on this, there's only been one. Um, I wouldn't necessarily view as a precedent setting. I think you have to look at each one on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, what, are they, what are they doing? How are they improving the building? Are they generating new jobs? Things like that. And as, as, as Richard has indicated, they also are willing to give back to the community. We've talked about a contribution to the transportation uh, program that we, we put together and things like that. So. Um, I'm going to let Katie do some talking, but that's <laughs> <laughs> from my perspective, when we first sat down with Richard and, uh, you know, I just thought it was a very unique company and one that would fit very well in the community. Right, so, oh. Just a quick, a quick question. Headcount-wise, what is the capacity of that building today? 175. 175? De depending on, on the density of the equipment that goes in. And that we could adequately park all those vehicles there? Yeah, there is uh, 175 parking spaces. So even if we give uh, 40 to 45 of them to the school district, we still have ample parking for okay. the park. And we met with JD uh, on Friday. So JD is uh, aware of this and gave us a lot of the information that uh, they've done right now. Yeah. Dave, did you have a question? Yeah, actually, just a follow-on to that is <laughs> if your growth has been up. so strong and looking to double your employee base or about there um, over the next two years, um, what do you foresee at that point? Obviously, it's quiet in the future and, and been very successful so far, so far, but the concern I would have would be is, is then are you outgoing the facility that can hold, um, I think, 175 was parking capacity? Yeah. Yeah, and what, what's the capacity for the units that you would ultimately you build in there, I think you said 100, was 120? 120. And um, would that accommodate your growth the next five years or eight years? Or? Yeah, that's that's the plan, is he, here's the thing. You know, you can have uh, what we call meteoric rise, right? And you can take all the business in the world, it's kind of the Walmart syndrome, right? They tell you we'll buy a million of them, and then you jump on it and dump all the other customers, and then one day they come to you and they tell you, you know, we like you, but we want it for 20% less. Yeah. And you're stuck. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is to stay very diversified in terms of our customer base, which means we will never let one customer become more than a certain percentage of our business. So we've kind of capped it at 120 units a month. And, you know, that could mean if someone comes to us with a million, you know, with 120 
million dollar machines, we obviously can't do it either, right? So it's really a mix and it's a study of where the business should be. And I think that the realization is that the business itself is actually going into a more technological um, bend. And so the idea is at some point, uh, we may get tired of painting our machines and we may outsource that to a guy down the street uh, instead of you know, installing a new paint booth, right? So there's some of these considerations and, and the way I manage that you know, in, in terms of being in charge of operations is we try to keep in house the steady growth and we, the plan is to eventually outsource all the ups and downs that are traveling on top of that steady growth. And, and, and so this way we can kind of plan for where we're going. You know, the company's been around 55 years and it's by, by design, they've planned very well. They've never kind of gone outside of what their capabilities were. Um, the company is 100% debt free, but that will change when we buy the building. Um, all of the equipment we own, we bought, None of it is leased, none of it is, um, and, and that's been kind of the policy of the company. You only grow at the rate that you can afford uh, in terms of uh, organic growth. So yeah, to answer, it's a long-winded answer, but basically um, at 120 units on average per month, um, that's gonna get to about where we wanna be in terms of being manageable. Do you expect to be there with your plan in 2017 at units per month? Or is that more like a 2020 goal? Or no, if we could do 120 tomorrow, we would. <laughs> so that's that's how much demand there is. Okay, so it's essentially at capacity. We are. Facilities on. As quickly as we grow, we will be at capacity. We are at capacity, we continue to be. Steve? Let's for the town manager, what um, what does a potential of reimbursement from the Massachusetts yep. Office of Business Development for some of the abatement value mean? Well, they, they are going to get, they're, they're, this will also quite uh, qualify AES for a, uh, a special, uh, excuse me, a, um, a, uh, a tax credit. And my understanding is there will be some trickle back to the town. I'm not sure of the magnitude of that yet. Um, Sounds state like zero. excise tax credit or what kind? I, I don't know. It's a, it's a credit that was put up through this legislation. Um, haven't really discussed that with our, our Okay, rep okay. so it's prob system. probably not a significant well, issue. Well, I'm talking that it, it, you know, uh, given the size of the project, it probably would be that significant. Okay. Right. Yeah, can, I, can I ask a question? Bob? <coughs> In terms of Acton's local taxes. Yeah. Assume that the building is occupied by them yeah. without any special incentive. Yeah. As I understood the gentleman, they would generate fifty thousand dollars worth of local taxes right. a year. Right. They're gonna get from us a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar tax abatement, so essentially two and a half years of free taxes and then ever after they would pay the normal rate. Or right, let me well maybe uh, Bob can, can I just back up because we haven't gotten to that part yet. So uh, the way the statute reads that if, uh, if, if you go for a special tax assessment, year one, uh, the entity pays no tax. Uh, and, and Richard has put that up. Year <coughs> two, uh, the town would negotiate uh, a 75 to 100% tax abatement. Year three, 50 to 100%. Year four, 25 to 100%. And year five onward, zero to 100%, you could actually negotiate. So. What uh, we have worked out with a, uh, AES is 100% the first year, is, that's, that's the requirement. Year two would be a 75% abatement, year three a 50% abatement, year four 25%, and year five onward would be full, full value. So it's 125 over the really four years. Which would otherwise be 200,000 if you had no special arrangements. And they were operating at capacity. I'll refer to Mr. McMullen on the numbers, but no, that's 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 true, Bob. If you take the fifty thousand okay. times the four yeah, years, you're at two hundred versus the years. I thought I assumed right. I just want to make sure I just understand. Right. 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 Jason, uh, 
uh, you said you've been in business for 55 years, so the entire time in the AIR facility? Um, the entire time in AIR, not okay. in that facility. Okay. Uh, following up to uh, what, what uh, the other gentleman said, if you're going to be at capacity as quickly as you possibly can, um, what's the likelihood come year five that you're looking for a 75,000 square foot facility and no longer will need this facility and will therefore be looking to another town for a special tax assessment for, its, for your new <laughs> facility? Well, the last time the company moved was 22 years ago. Okay. Um, and I think I attempted to answer this question earlier by saying that this is a privately owned company by a single person, our CEO, and he intends to keep control of the company. And based on organic growth and our ability to actually finance our own operations, we've kind of determined that we want to get to a certain numbers in terms of revenue. Um, he's 43 years old. I don't think he's planning to retire anytime soon. So yeah, there are no guarantees. You know, Someone could come to him and say, here's a billion dollars, we want your company. Um, the plan right now is to move to a facility that we feel comfortable for the foreseeable future uh, with no limits will be where we want to be. And it's, it's close to where we want to be. It's the right building, the right environment. But you um, could be at capacity in two years. We will be at capacity in two years, and that's where we want to be. So you don't want to grow after that, is what you're saying? No, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to put out a number because, I, you know, being a private company, I don't think it would be fair uh, without the CEO being here. But we've kind of set a number that we feel comfortable we're going to be able to manage with our own growth without having to go out and get capital financing. Um, and, and that's where we're going to be. Um, Hard for me to give you a hundred percent guarantee <laughs> that that's what it's going to be, right? But look at the history of the company. I think that it's fair to assume that that you know, fifty-five years of history is going to kind of tend to repeat itself. Right? The um, one hundred and twenty units, uh, if there's the average size for unit, how many tractor trailers a day does that represent on Main Street? Um, We basically get one or two trailers a week in terms of shipping. Uh, in terms of deliveries, we have every day we have three or four deliveries, whether it's metal or piping or, but it's, I, I would say that it's a fraction of what was there before. Uh, there's five loading docks in this facility. We currently have one. <laughs> Yeah, I drove around that site uh, last weekend, and uh, it's a nice, pretty nice building. The, the it's from the outside. It, yeah, the beauty of it is that it's fully, let's say we have very little to do to walk in and, and actually operate. And that's, that's one of the advantages of the building. Steve, did you have anyone else? <laughs> Margaret? Just oh. in terms, oh. oh um, just in terms of the the, um, the benefits to our town, um, has anyone actually done any kind of back of the envelope even calculations on, on what this does for us? I mean, we know we're spending one hundred twenty-five thousand. We're getting seventy-five thousand on average, right? If we go with the fifty thousand per year, um, <coughs> have we have we looked at? I mean. Steve, you were saying, you know, every dollar spent in town, you know, the whole multiplier effect, um, which I'm sure is a little probably different economists will say, tell you different things. But beyond that, have we tried to do any sense of, of value to the town? Because it is a chunk of money. And I, and I think, again, I think it's a great company and it seems like a great fit, um, but it is a big chunk of money. And it's not totally clear to me that that's that we're definitely getting our money's worth back if unless we've sort of tried to do some kind of calculation that I'm unaware of and secondly I am a little bit um, concerned that you know once year five is over or or just a not many years 
that they will outgrow this facility. Maybe they can use the 20,000 square foot place that they're leasing now, they plan to lease now to grow into, so that would give them a little bit more time to be there. But um, you know, you never know if it's exponential growth in the industry. They've only, you know, put in 250,000 invested in the capital, you know, infrastructure piece of it. It's not that much to walk away from. Well, so, if I may, that's on top of the six million dollars worth of equipment we're bringing into the building that you couldn't it's portable, leave, right? Couldn't Sorry. leave with. It's portable. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you take exactly. it away. Yeah. We have to move an entire business. Yeah. No, no. I mean, but there's obviously there, costs. There's very, there's definitely costs, but it just seems like there's still. You know, anyway, I, I do think there's an issue, and not to say that Richard's being disingenuous, I don't think that's happening at all, but I just think the reality is if you really are growing, you're going to be at capacity as soon as you move in, there's nowhere to grow. You're focusing on the wrong thing. So, that's an issue. Mr. Chairman, one last question, I, I, I'll shut up. I, have, I know I've asked a lot of questions, this will be my last one, I promise. Mr. Ledoux, <laughs> this is to you. Uh, you you mentioned it was at your discretion statement. to say that they're meeting or not meeting their job growth expectations. Uh, well, it's not our, I mean, I wouldn't say it's our discretion. We have, we will have a contract with them that will articulate what the goals are. Do you, ha has, have that been has, that, has that been, has that been determined at this time? Not yet, not yet, no. I mean, uh, that would be the next step after town meeting is town meeting. But their economic so development director. Uh, now, what happens is that, uh, AES would have to file uh, reports with uh, with the Mass Office of Business mm -hmm. Development. We have access to no. those reports, and those reports will it's not getting, you know, indicate not uh, you know, employment stuff like that. So like we'll be able candidates. to determine through the uh, Mass Office of Business yeah. Development yeah. portal yeah. how well they're meeting their goals. Mr. Chairman, at the three point. Uh, Steve, go no first. Oh, you got one. I, I, I got a comment. My, my comment is that, you know, we have a lot of empty office space in town. The Gog Hill and, Absolutely. and the, the building that was a Rob report. I think that's three quarters vacant. And that the building where they're looking at is vacant. So it's better to bring a business in there. I mean, yeah, it does take away a little bit of a uh, tax, but it also gets people that their employees, they're going to go, hey, I'm going to bring a pizza for everybody that day. Well, Acton House or whoever gets Sir called Dose. to serve them, and we get meals taxed on that. Domino's, whoever. So you're going to be buying coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, getting gas at, at the gas stations in Kelly's Corner. Right. Now, my and point is, did somebody CBS. actually try to calculate that out based on? I think that's kind of hard to do yeah. in a lot of ways. Not really. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's numbers out there you could use. I mean, you do other than coffee, but I mean, so I, I look at, at the way that we're taking a, a building that's currently vacant, not doing anybody any good, just sitting there. They're going to bring in and put a solar array out back, so they're going to be using less power off the grid. You know, use the backup storage from Tesla. I think it's and heat pumps. I think it's all a win-win for the uh, for the town in general. So I think I was next, Doug. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> and then Doug. All right. So a week from tonight, whenever we'll be in front of the town, um, and I'll throw this question out. Um, I don't need a job. Um, and I believe 97% of the people in town don't need a job. Um, I don't own a restaurant, gas station, convenience store that will benefit from having 120 more people uh, in town. Meals tax. Um, you know how small a percent that is? <laughs> well, that's uh, it. It's about $100 a year. <laughs> Meals tax, okay. So, why should I vote for this? I think part of it is, again, in after year four, starting in year five, they'll be paying full taxes on a building that's currently empty and not paying this level of taxes, um, A. B, well, I, can I interrupt? What level of taxes is being paid? <laughs> what level? Are they not paying taxes on this building? Somebody's paying taxes on this building. <laughs> or we don't it. <laughs> All right, so what? So we're currently getting $50,000. Uh, so the first year we're not going to get the 50. Uh, we, we may avoid some costs at the school district, which would be nice. Uh, but so going forward, I, so again, I think going forward after year four, they will be paying paying tax on this building. You have the added benefit of the people that will be in town spending money, so there's you know, tax and other tax and the benefit to just the community in general. 
still, again, we'll be using our public transportation system, which I think is of value to our town. Okay. And um, I think personally that this is a signifier of, you know, we talk about wanting to be um, a open to more economic development and I think that this is a way to show that we are. This is, as the manager mentioned, a pretty new tool that we are able to use as of only about a year, year and a half ago. So it's not as though, you know, we, we've just been saying this for a long time, but so I think it's a unique opportunity to indicate that we are a town that is open to business. <coughs> as Roland mentioned, there's a lot of available commercial space and so ideally, this is something that you know we'll say to people that we're welcoming and willing to work with businesses to have you come and grow here, um, a and increasing the you know our commercial development then eventually decreases the burden on our residential property tax. So I think there is a value to the regular citizen at large. And to get back to a bit about what Margaret was asking about about being opportunistic versus sort of strategic, I think that this one did end up. You know, it, it is an opportunity, as Steve said, that came up. This wasn't something that we were necessarily looking to do, but I think when it did present itself, again, this is a new kind of tool. There's a company that came to us and said, you know, here's what we're thinking, and, and you know, we'd like to come here as a possibility. Can you make this work? And it is the kind of company, I think, that we want to bring here. Um, they're very good corporate citizens. They aren't having a negative impact on our environment in any way. They're adding value to our community. Um, so in this case, it did seem like a good opportunity. And going forward to be more strategic, I think that's a large part of why we're, we're in the midst of hiring a land use and economic development director. So that there is somebody that can think about this tool and other tools that we might have and how we can apply those in a court of kind of more strategic vision going forward so that we're not just waiting for these opportunities. But in the meantime, this one has come up, and I think it does not necessarily set a precedent that we're going to do this for everybody, but it does say, listen, we are a welcoming town for business. We've got space coming in. Now, the other tool that we, we didn't talk about because it wasn't necessarily pertinent to uh, AES, but would be a very good tool, I think, for, for, for development of Kelly's Corner is the tax increment financing piece, which is different, where, for example, the property assessment would be frozen before the improvement, uh, so they would pay taxes on what the value was on that property, and any improvement would be negotiated similar like this, so that you would give them some incentive on, on the increment uh, to kind of entice the development of Kelly's Corner to happen. So, you know, this isn't the only tool under under that uh, the new economic development law, but this was one that was probably more pertinent in the AES uh, situation. Uh, I just, uh, from my perspective, I, I just have a comment that I have a question for Brian. I, I unfortunately had to miss the selectmen's meeting where this presentation was made, so this is the first time I've really seen it, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with their uh, willingness to uh, kind of assist the town, for instance, the school bus parking. But for instance, the green initiatives, the, the solar array and heat pumps, I am the liaison to the Green Advisory Board in town, so I emailed them today. I have no idea, you know, I'm not a scientist. I don't understand what that would provide to the town. I expect them to come to town meeting and help us quantify exactly what that means in terms of helping the environment, how much less emissions, emissions into the air, all that stuff, to kind of get a sense of of what that provides to this project that might compensate the town for giving up these taxes. So my question for Brian are, we're paying 50000 now, and AES moves into the building. Doesn't sound like there's a huge amount of uh, capital investment in improving the building, but the five years is up. Would they be paying more than 50000 after five years normally in terms of tax specific? Yeah, all of the, 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 I mean, I would typically tell you that the, the market is continuing to rise right now in the commercial sector. It's, it's slow, but I think you're going to see that turn around gradually. And frankly, I think right now, you know, it's, it's 50,000 today. I think you're going to see a 2 or 3% increase probably over the next, you know, several years. So that's going to continue to go up based on property values increasing. Okay, and also, if they move all of this equipment that they're trying to <coughs> substantial value do they start paying them personal property taxes and all that equipment? I mean that's a good question probably for Richard. I'm not sure if he's uh, you know my personal property has special my, my understanding rules. is personal uh, <laughs> personal property is not exempted of these taxes. 
if, if you're if it's right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, this, you know, under corporation status, if you're declared a manufacturing corporation by the state of Massachusetts, there is no local personal property assessment. Right. Oh. If he's not declared as a manufacturing corporation, then that machinery used in the con conduct of business would be taxed at the local level. So this this okay. special. Do you know if you're a manufacturer? Oh, definitely. Let's <laughs> 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 say fire your accountants in there. This goes to the point I wanted to make. Is, uh, it is hard to attract manufacturing companies and manufacturing growth. They're all going overseas where it's cheaper to produce. So for Acton to land this opportunity to attract a manufacturer who has a vision for growth, I think, is is, is important, and I think it sends a, it sends a signal. And it brings in jobs to the town that are, uh, you know, people are going to have more money to spend uh, here in town if they come here and work, as opposed to. And I'm not trying to dis minimum wage workers, but this is sort of the snowball effect that comes with getting the manufacturing facility and, and produce it here to this. So it's hard to quantify, but you know, all things put together, in my mind, you know, bringing a manufacturer into town, uh, sending a signal uh, to the larger business community that we're open for economic development, we're open for business. I think all of those things, uh, hard to put a dollar value to that, but I think <coughs> they mean a lot. Ms. Cho? And, and one more other thing. If the, if the facility, and that's a question for you, Brian, if the facility were to remain vacant, wouldn't the taxes eventually decline over the years? Well, a good bit, maybe with the <laughs> request, et cetera, but isn't that what's happening at NATO? Now, one of the things that we look at in the, in the commercial side of things is we look at the vacancy rate in commercial buildings, and as vacancy rates continue to rise, it generally lowers their property values because we don't just look at one specific building, but we look at the vacancy throughout the town for that particular type of building. It's manufacturing, it's office, it's retail space. It's all based on supply and demand. So if you have lots of supply and there's no demand, your vacancy rates are higher, it affects your property assessments, they will come down. What is the general commercial thing? Sorry. You can move. You know, um, you had to ask me that question. <laughs> I, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know. I know if you go here to the you know, we've got 100 in uh, park. Yeah, that's why I'm going to office. It's been for, uh, yeah, I'm going to move to recommend it. Oh, it's going to be Oh, uh, it's going to be a let that go. No. We'll be here all night. All right. He's got it now. He's got his hand out. experienced this type of vacancy for quite some time now. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think uh, unless there's other. Uh, Can I have a big quick Well, yeah, I, you got to watch the clock on this right. if it, we can do okay. it quick. Okay. So you. In general, I mean, I'm in full support bringing more business to the town, and then everybody, a lot of people make good comment. I mean, we want to send a good signal to the business community that we work on business to our community as long as they are red fit. But the thing is that uh, just for this one particular place, are we willing to extend the tax abatement to all new community, all new business coming to our community? What's our general guidelines? I think there are too many things. We have hand waving, we don't have a good strategy. I think that's the part which I'm a little bit concerned. That's um, coming from an environment where the government uh, it's not particularly transparent, so I'm al always worried whenever there are things which are not clearly laid out and not clearly described. Uh, that always has rooms uh, for... Rather have the contract rules in mind and in place before we appro 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 appropriate the money, rather than say we'll approach that after we appropriate the money. Just to be clear, we're not appropriating anything. It's not all well, we're surrendering it. We're surrendering it. <laughs> we're losing any money coming into us because other taxpayers are covering what essentially were there. The not contract will reflect the conditions that town meeting accepts on this deal. You're going you're gonna to give up 62% of the tax revenues generated by this property for four years, right? That's what we're What are we getting in return? I think that's the question that a lot of people are concerned about. 
We don't it's, even know it's, what's it's all. It's all, uh, with all due respect, uh, we, to AES is a, it's a terrific company. We have no problem with that. What you're seeing is, is, the, is the nice parts of economic development. This is, what you, this is what you get when you have good economic development. You get good companies and things are just great. But in this instance, we're being asked to pay uh, the equivalent of, what, 11 houses, 12 houses worth of average tax, you know, if, if the average tax bill enacted is $5,000, right? I'm sorry, $10,000. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. Send me in. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> 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 Imagine your house and, and 11 other houses on your street two, paying so nothing. <laughs> and yet you'd have to ask, at some point, if you don't, your neighbor's going to ask, what are we getting in return for this? What did we leverage? Now, this property went vacant a couple of years ago in the worst recession since the Great Depression. And, you know, Brian's right. He says the economy is recovering. This property is going to lease. And it's not going to take four years for it to lease. You're getting paid anyway. So, in, and in the meantime, we're receiving our tax money. Okay? Whether it's vacant or it's occupied, mox nick. We're getting our money. And people have said, well, there's the meals tax. Yeah, do the math on the meals tax. It's about $100. For the employees, if it, if you had all the employees in the company at 55 go to lunch and breakfast every <laughs> single day, you can get to like five or six hundred dollars. So the meals tax is not is not the issue. Well, they're going to come and buy houses in active, right? But the houses we're not going to stand empty. All they're going to do is maybe a quarter of the company will come and live in active. Okay, assume that those 12 people will be out there in the what, 300 houses that we sell, I don't know what the number is, in, in Acton every year, they would increase the competition a little bit. So maybe they would raise the price of the houses that they were chasing by $1,000, which is worth $20. Right? That's our tax rate per thousand. So take it, if that's per capita, and now say, okay, you're going to do it with 12 or 13 people. You, know, you still can't get beyond $500. It's all my not one time. So it's, in terms of these other, you know, we're going to get money someplace else, we're not. The sales tax goes to the state. The payroll tax goes to the state. The payroll tax that the state is going to make on this, by the way, is about $600,000 over the course of this deal. Six hundred. I don't know what the state's putting up to get the six hundred. But if you take all that together and you start saying, what is the economic benefit? It's nice to have this company here, and those are the benefits of economic development. But in terms of us surrendering $125,000, we need to see a return on investment. And what's, what's been expressed here is all nice things about this company, which I totally share. I think it's a great idea. It's wonderful that they're, they're willing to look at us hard. But when it comes to, 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 to surrendering tax revenues like that in that increment, this is, this is like one-third of all the money that we spent on Kelly's Corner. It's 50% of, of the, the year's losses on the nursing service. This is, you take this out and you go around in, in town and you start saying, well, how does this compare with other things we spend money on? It's a big number. And there's no, there's no data, there's no numbers to show how we get our return on investment. And keep in mind the property is not going to stay vacant forever. Somebody else will come along and they'll improve the property <coughs> probably. And we'll raise our taxes just like we would with this one. Thank you. Can I make a proposal in terms of what we want to do with this? Do you want to, you want to vote on it? If we're ready to vote, <laughs> I think. Okay. You can make a proposal. I was just going to make a proposal which is that we perhaps defer to vote on this tonight and see if if somebody wants to come to us next Tuesday and give us actually some hard numbers. I mean, I'm presuming that the town or that the state, the reason they passed this legislation is they thought it would actually be beneficial for communities. So they thought that somehow by offering tax abatements that you would get more return on your dollar than just that tax revenue because of course we want commercial development but the reason we want commercial development is for the tax revenue so um, so anyway um, I just wonder if, if if there's a willingness to actually do some calculations to research about economic development there's got to be some numbers out there that are standard numbers used that what it creates in the community um, and if you know I'd be willing to defer my vote 
to next week to look at those numbers um, to, to make sure it's a compelling deal. You know, and we can factor in some of the other things that are not necessarily money, but environmental benefits, whatever. But we have a hard, you know, fast thing because frankly, I think it's going to be a hard sell the town meeting otherwise. So, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, may I ask that we do a straw vote in, in anticipation of that presentation a no. later? Just so we can get the sense of the committee tonight? Sure. Well, Bob, why don't you say something? I don't mind deferring, but you're not going to learn anything on Tuesday night that you don't know tonight. This is a, a projection in the future. If you think it is a reasonable first step, which may, may never repeat, you're going to be in favor of it. If you insist on having everything up to the top and, and guaranteed, and you're going to vote against it, and you're going to vote against everything up for commercial development that's going to come before this town meeting for the next 20 years. So I see no reason not to take a a final vote one way or the other tonight, but I'm perfectly willing to defer if that's the, what everybody else wants to do. Yeah, I think it's, it's um, an issue of uh, a short-term loss to the town versus a long-term gain, uh, you know, after looking past five years. Um, you know, it's sort of planting that seed and that little acorn and watching the oak tree grow, hopefully it would be more of that scenario versus throwing money down a well. So I, th I Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a general point. comment about tax increment financing in general. Normally this is done to bring vacant land online with new construction, or it's done to take that. land that is, that is exhausted, you know, brownfields, back online. Uh, old factory buildings. These kinds of instruments are widely used in places like the industrial heartland of, this, of the U.S., uh, in places like Boston, Brockton, Fall River, and so on. They're perfectly appropriate because the exercise is going to produce a net new value. So if you can take a piece of vacant land that's been vacant for a hell of a long time and you can turn it into a nice factory that's got 70,000 feet of good stuff going on and it's green and all that, that stuff, it's a home run to do the tax increment finance procedure. But if you're talking about an existing building with very modest improvements being made to it, a building that will lease up in the near term anyway, so there is no long term, the long term the long term's already there, then there's no apparent gain for towns like Acton to be using these tools to take a building that's 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 not you know it's not vacant because it's a brownfield and it's not an empty piece of land, it's a building that just got clobbered in the recession. And as the recession fades away, it's going to get unclobbered. So why are we putting our tax monies down front to leverage the changes which are going to occur anyway is the question on the table. And that has not been adequately answered. Thank you. May I say something? Sure. Um, I, I largely agree with you. And as, as it may seem interesting to you, um, it's I don't relish the idea of being a guinea pig here, right? <laughs> we're trying to run a business, and we're trying to do it in the best way possible. The history of the company says that. Um, we have a number of options. I personally think that this is the best option for our company, and, and I'm trying to build a consensus that we will contribute to the community, because that's what we currently do in AIR. Um, you know, our people volunteer. I mean, we do, we do a lot of things. I didn't want to bore you with that tonight. Um, and, and I do think that an incentive to bring in a business that has a long-term view of things does set, send a signal to the business community at large. Um, the second thing is there aren't that many U.S. Uh, factories actually looking to expand in the U.S. I spent the last 15 years of my life in China, running factories in China, and, and out of the hundreds of companies that I saw coming to us telling us we want a piece of China, I saw one or two going back to the U.S. saying we got beat up, we're going back. Um, and my last point is Milton Roy was actually a thriving business. They got bought out. 
and the company that bought them decided to move the facility to, to Texas. So I, I don't think it was a, a victim of the recession. Uh, this happened last year, uh, 14 months ago. And, uh, and, and then the last point is the broker that's actually selling the property to us has had a dozen inquiries. Um, all of them walked away because the property sits on a water well and, and has very high limitations of what kind of use can go in there. So my prediction is it'll take a while to find a company that can actually fill this building and, and use it to where, and, and the building doesn't get better with age, it's not wine. Um, you know, the outside of the building is, old, is already suffering from neglect. And so um, I think we're proposing to do a lot of things that I think will improve uh, not only the life of our employees, but our ability to contribute to the town. Um, but I totally respect your opinion. We'd be delighted to have you in act. There's no question. I don't think anybody here has any feelings uh, to the contrary. And, and if, if there's a message that, that we'd like you to take back to the company, it's, that's, that's how we feel about it. Our beef, uh, to the extent that there is one, uh, is with the mechanism and not with, the, with, with your company. Right. So we want to bring this to a vote. So, yeah, I think we should do a vote. I motion that we approve, that we recommend. Second. Okay, all in favor, raise your, maybe raise your hand. So I can't make a motion about the, uh, <laughs> about the deferred vote? Oh, uh, well. No? Yeah, you do. Okay. Well, actually, you did start it. Yeah, you, yeah. Can make a, you can make a motion. So I'm, I move that First. we defer this vote oh, in yeah, anticipation yeah, 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 of getting <laughs> more. Motion. You have a motion, motion on, on the table. floor. Okay, okay fine. Motion on the floor. Okay, go. We need to deal with that one. Okay. All right. First things first. Motion on the floor. Especially we have a second. The, the motion was to recommend the Warren article um, for the special tax assessment. Um, all in favor, raise your hand. How many is that? One, two. See four, five, five, five. In favor of this. In favor. Opposed. Three. Uh, and abstain. I'm abstaining. Well, it's five. I think we need more information. Okay. Five, three. The, the motion uh, passes. Or recommends. I know that the town is going to put into the contract. Thank you. Thank you very much. But because the town didn't tell us if they're going to put down the whole thing, they're not going to watch it. There's nothing to do. Let's get some concessions. Let's see. Nobody will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who's that? Um, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a request? Do you, does anybody here need to hear about Minuteman? The request, the amendment of the regional agreement to allow the withdrawal of the town of Wayland. Because if you don't want to hear about that, I would like to see the town force to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. going to vote to recommend to to keeping Minuteman the way it is. Okay. I agree with that. So, so you need a second? Yeah, we so, can. Uh, uh, wait, yes. Let's get the language here. <laughs> okay. What's, what number is that We're one? We're taking up 10. 10. So number 10. 10. That is to uh, amend the. Um, this would approve the withdrawal. Wayland's request to withdraw from the agreement. I move that we do not recommend this article. Second. Yeah, all, just, all in favor? Something because uh, I think it's important to understand the process of, of, of uh, regional vote tax. 16 towns have to agree to allow Wayland to withdraw. Last night, Lexington voted not to allow Wayland to withdraw. Good for them. <laughs> it's a move point. So do you recommend we defer this, or do you recommend we well, shoot it down to be yeah, in solidarity? Thing, okay. Let the town manager explain. Un under state law, uh, for, for vote text, a non-vote is a yes vote. So in essence, if we took no action next Tuesday night, it's a yes vote. 
it's one of these weird nuances that yes to allow them to withdraw to withdraw right so no action is a yes vote so let's so vote. Not so you want to restate that uh, <laughs> the motion on the table, Mr. Chairman, I believe, is to vote to vote not to in favor. not recommend Article Ten. Right. All in favor Someone of not. It? Do we have a second? second? Okay. Yeah. Do we have to open to discussion now? Sure. Okay. So um, I I think I'll be voting to support this just because I think that we should be allowing towns to withdraw. They want to withdraw. And I think that Minuteman, <laughs> there's a lot of problems that Minuteman has that I've expressed to many of the Finance Committee members when we went to their informational session about the, um, about the new building that Minuteman has failed to address and they have not researched. And I was frankly very disappointed in that lack of rigor. And I can understand why a town might want to withdraw it because it's extremely expensive. So just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, I, I would disagree respectfully. I think that the people in the Minuteman community have worked their tails off for the last, all the years that I've been following this issue, which is eight years now. Uh, it is a very messy process with the 16 towns having to be unanimous. Uh, it, this whole situation is a direct failure, a result of the failure of the Commonwealth to exercise oversight over voed schools. And Minuteman uh, Technical High School has been a victim of that. They didn't bring this on themselves, and they haven't made matters worse. They've done the best they could. Under these circumstances, allowing a town to withdraw or multiple towns to withdraw simply increases the burden on the surviving towns. So I'm totally in favor of our not allowing this uh, Wayland to withdraw. I personally also have been following the progress of uh, Minuteman, and I. I believe in their program. Uh, I know they're they're working their tail off to, to come up with a new uh, a new educational program, something that builds excitement, something that, that uh, addresses a need in the region for for vocational training. That uh, you know, if they were out, uh, if they were not there, it would be a void that couldn't. It would be very difficult to fill. So I. Personally, uh, from what I've observed over the last several years, is uh, to be in support of not allowing uh, Whalen also to withdraw. I, I, I think um, Minuteman needs the uh, as much support as we can give them. Okay. At least that's my opinion. Obviously, there are some you know, contrary views. But any other questions? I mean, probably you should vote, but I will just say one of the things that I kept asking and there was no good answer to is, have you looked at the demand for what you're building this new building for? And there was not a good answer, and that's a concern. But we don't have to debate this now because I know everyone else disagrees with me, but I do think there <coughs> are real issues. There are real issues about, about the demand, and there are other creative ways we could address the need of technical education besides building a brand new huge building that there's not demand for. <clears throat> well, basically, that would be starting from scratch. Sure, yeah. but it might be cheaper. But that train has already left the station. More conducive to the different towns involved. I, I will say that I've been following it long, as long as Doug, if not longer. Um, we've let this thing develop into a crisis. It was a crisis 10 years ago. That building is in terrible shape. We should have done something a long time ago. Uh, but we didn't, the state didn't step in. Um, to do anything about it. We're 16 towns in a, in a collaborative, if you will. Um, we're all in it together. Uh, we all caused the problem together or didn't solve the problem together. I don't see why letting this one or Sudbury, if they're next, try and get out is in anybody's best interest. We all need to get together and solve the problem. But that building is potentially going to be condemned one of these days. And um, we can't start over now. Anyone else? Are you ready for a vote? All in favor of the proposal, as as stated, uh, to not endorse Wayland's withdrawal. Say aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. Abs abstentions. So it's. Uh, Eight to one. Mm -hmm. 
So the finance committee is will put a check mark in the recommend column. Uh, no, excuse no, me, not, not, not recommend. recommend. Not recommend. Not recommend. Me. It's a trick question. Not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> it's very tricky. Now, while the town manager is here, other proposal, other water articles here that you want to address? Yeah, uh, uh, quickly. Uh, you talk about both 11 and 12 land acquisitions. Uh, at this point, with two, three, four working days till the town meeting, we have no agreements on these two properties. Uh, the selectmen have deferred any position till Tuesday night in case lightning strikes, but <laughs> I would say probably no likelihood we will take no action on 11 and 12. So do I hear... Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we defer um, Article 11. Second. And 12. And 12. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So 11 and 12 are deferred. Is this the property of Marshall? Is this trying to put in the house? 13. Yeah. Uh, 13 is a, a very small exactly piece that um, oh, is kind of a companion piece to a piece of property we bought in 08. It's uh, at the acreage. I think it's like three acres. Uh, uh, is, and, the, and the price is 28000 Twenty pounds. Okay. Where's the money coming from? I guess that'd be coming from free cash. And where's the property? Originally, we we had asked the open space committee if they would entertain it coming from the open space set aside, but given the small amount of this this property and the cost of putting a conservation restriction and paying somebody to hold it just didn't didn't seem. Any other uh, um, comments? I've got a question. On exactly where is the property? Right here. The map in this? I think it's where Port Farm Brook crosses Mass Ave. Yeah. Right. It is below the wave project behind that. It's right next to this one. I'm sorry, what's <laughs> the swamp, is it? Looks like it is the swamp. That's <laughs> <laughs> a wildlife. Once a year it's dry. <laughs> but wave, wave is up here. Wave is those, those ones right there. <laughs> that's where the wave is. What are they going to do with that? Did we talk about that? What the, how the property be used? It's just hmm. going just gonna to remain open space. It is. Um, We'd like to announce that. It's on the open space for creation. <laughs> there may be some trail uh, adjacent to it, so the trail would be, I think, some trail would be developed. Um, What's the tax impact on that? <laughs> it's right on swamps. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Do I have a motion? No, I have a question. Sorry, uh, I know you're. Question? A question? I know you're. Yeah, it's a question. So, uh, what's the impetus for doing this now? instead of waiting until April. I mean, I think, you know, I know philosophically, at least for me and maybe some other people on FinCom, putting forth articles that are money related, you know, if, unless there's some urgent need, doesn't seem to be the right time until we can look at everything in a whole picture with the, the annual budget. I, I think there was some concern that the, uh, the owner of the property is in, in very bad health and just wanted to get it resolved. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, motion to recommend Roll. Article 13. Okay. Second. 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 Okay, all, any other uh, discussion? Okay, take a vote. All in favor? The aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous? No. No. no? Abstentions. Oh, abstentions? I'm abstaining just because I, I think that we should be deferring these kinds of bills to um, these kind of items to acting annual motel meeting. Okay. Uh, yeah. One other comment can I make? <clears throat> That's okay. Just sure. again, the clarity here, or the lack of clarity <coughs> in the warrant when it says we'll authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise on such terms and conditions. Again, it's like well, what is it, and how much is it for? So, 
again, that's just a total lack of clarity when a, when a voter is looking at this. They have no idea what you're talking about. Is it eminent domain? Are you spending money on it? Is somebody giving it to you? All of that. And how much? Valid points. Well, since, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman I just, I'm, I'm sympathetic with what Margaret has said. And since we have all these people in the room, uh, the committee has discussed, and I think there's a general agreement, that the problem with the special town meetings, uh, given our low turnout uh, at special town meetings, and indeed at, the, at, at our general town meeting, but especially at, at the, the special town meetings where it's often a special interest group that dominates the scene. The people who really want to see something happen that's on the warrant are the ones that are motivated to be there. The school people are generally not there and so on. So it's an unrepresentative meeting. Uh, and we feel that that uh, that every effort should be made where it can be it can be done to keep issues that that really could be handled at the annual town meeting in the annual town meeting and to minimize wherever possible the use of the special town meetings unless there are exigent circumstances. I think you know I, I appreciate that, but I do think that um, you know if you notice from our August town meeting we actually had a bigger turnout that night than we often do the second night of the annual town. The special interest group, yeah. Well, I don't think that was all special interest group at all. I don't think there was a huge special interest group with that land. I think that we did a lot of outreach and a lot of people showed up. The number of people that told me that they saw the video that we did was extraordinary. So I don't think that was all a special interest group showing up for that. So I think that, you know, as you pointed out, annual town meeting doesn't, unfortunately, does not have huge turnout either. And by the second night, we have even fewer people coming out. So if there are things that we can take off that would shorten the annual town meeting, there's that value to that as well. And so I think that there were enough articles for this special town meeting that we felt it was worth calling it, and that most of these are things we feel are good to do at this time. And we have been doing outreach again. We've been making these, you know, TV shows that Steve does and sending those around, and it's been widely successful. So if there are other ideas of ways if you guys would like to offer your assistance in providing outreach, we welcome that. But I don't think that we haven't been doing that and making efforts in recent weeks to, to do that. So right. Mr. Chairman. Steve. Uh, Steve. May I join? Can I go first? Because <laughs> <laughs> you talk too long. Yeah. In that case, I suggested that you convene a, a, a panel of leading citizens to talk about our use of the town meeting as our as our principal executive slash legislative body. Uh, and maybe that should be done. Maybe we should have two town meetings a year. Uh, if but but you're backing into it one issue at a time. And I recommend that that you do that on a broad scale and think about the necessary charter changes. If we really do have to have more than one town meeting, let's let's go for it and let's do it right and let's publicize it. And I agree with you that those videos are very useful. I believe the just point of information, the legal voters, I believe, is looking into um, different forms of uh, town meeting and whether going to represent a town meeting or having a permanent while town meeting is beneficial. So I believe that is a project we're working on. Okay, Steve. Um, well, I see a broader problem here. Uh, we have an annual budget process um, that we go through, um, and we have a, an act and leadership group, uh, and we reach consensus on spending plans and revenue plans uh, over the course of some fairly intense um, negotiating sessions. So when you get into spending money off cycle, uh, to me you're just, you know, uh, trying to run a, run a circle around the ALG process. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this like, is the town withdrawing from ALG? Are we, are we not going to have it anymore? Uh, you know, or how is this bringing forth spending articles? Uh, I mean, we, yeah, it was a million eight spent in, in August. Now we've got, I don't know, a few hundred thousand uh, in November. <laughs> Are these things that would have made the cut um, in April or not? Uh, we spend a lot of time looking at the list of projects, and every year some things don't make it because other things take <coughs> uh, priority. Uh, we're just we're throwing away 
a system, whether you like the ALG or you don't like the ALG, it's worked for this town pretty well for a long time. And we're just, we're going away from it. We're going to special town meetings to appropriate money. And I, I don't think it's a good idea at all. And for that reason, I'm not going to support any of the spending articles that we take up from here on in. I, I'd just like to, to Barry. comment on that. Let me just ask Steve, I mean, how would you pay this $28,000? Is that going to be within this year's budget? Uh, well, I think the plan was free cash. Free cash, right? Okay. I was going to say, if it was, if it was a budget item, it's not, we could make it's not the, it's you know, not the 28, it's the, the, the next couple that'll come up that are in the 100,000. It's a budget item that's just basically not decreasing the bottom line or taking the free cash. I have to make a distinction, but this is, this is close to what's going to Margaret? Well, just to that point, I mean, I think, you know, to sort of say, well, we were going to use it for more free cash anyway, to suggest that somehow it's not part of our budget. I mean, you know, as we all know, money is fungible. So no matter when you use it and no matter what budget it's from, it still belongs to the taxpayer and we still should be thinking about it in a rigorous way as part of a holistic, um, in, a, in a holistic way, as Steve was saying. And I think that's the frustration. Um, you know, I mean, there was this idea passed around, you know, for last town meeting in, in August that that 1.8, oh, well, it's not going to affect you at all because we already have the money. Well, of course it is. <laughs> That's money that could go back to the town, could be used for other things. It's fungible. You can't sort of say that it just by because we have the money doesn't mean that it's not going to affect the taxpayer and that it shouldn't be looked at holistically. So I think we have to rethink about how we do this. Yeah, the whole concept of these special town meetings is, you know, the door gets cracked open a little bit and then all these Warren articles come rushing through. We have no very or no or very little information about any of any of them. Uh, the confusion that you see tonight is, is going to be just exacerbated uh, at town meeting. You know, we don't understand what these issues are in, you know, five minutes or less. How, so, how are we going to accomplish that in an efficient in fair manner at town meeting. It's just not the way we should be doing things. Just my personal opinion. Um, where are we? Did we, <laughs> we, 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 we uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we can do you can pick your next article you want to talk about. Kelly's corner? South Acton we really, we, So we've done South Acton Train that cost money. So we need to do I'm not going to do South Acton Train. Yeah. 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 And it's it's home home it's home home. like a can with local It's not. 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 It's what number is that? I can uh, either Eight. answer questions. I have a presentation, or uh, Rob, you'd like to. Sure. And you can introduce yourself, and then. Thank you. I'm I'm David Martin. I'm chair of the, uh, the South Acton Train Station Advisory Committee. So, um, the, just by way of background, the train station project is nearing completion. Probably the platforms will open before the end of this month, and the, I, I expect that the station will be very close to finished by the end of the year. It, this is a couple of pictures of the current construction. So, um, first, why is landscaping landscaping needed at the train station? Uh, although the train station is not quite in the uh, South Lake historic district, um, from the very beginning of the project, there's been concern that the historic, uh, of the effect of the train station on the historic district. Um, the new station's platforms are large and visible from Jones Chatham and Exchange Hall, and um, uh, there was a lot of discussion of this uh, before the, the project was started, um, and uh, the SATSEC agreed at that time to look into landscaping when the project was nearing completion. Um, the landscaping included as part of the MBTA project is minimal and, and mostly includes, uh, it's mostly just grass and, and shrubs. 
this is the view of the train station from, well, actually, it's the view of the platform. You can't see the station building from here. Uh, this is the view of the platforms from Jonestown. Um, you can see that I mean, there's, there, it'll look a little bit different. There'll be a fence along the top of the a platform, a rail, when, the, when, the, uh, when it's uh, done. Um, uh, but that, you can, that, that, the white stripe along the edge is um, the, uh, uh, the platform itself. There are, there are a number of places that are possible for landscaping in this picture. Oh, this laser work. Uh, at, the, at the end of the platform here, I think may, these barriers may, may go. Um, there's, there's an area over here next to the, this ramp that leads up to the, the platform on this side, and across the, the, the platform on the other side. And there's also places that are, are not visible in this, in this, uh, from this angle. Why do we need to deal with the landscaping um, and now? Um, well, it's, it's up to you guys whether you want to recommend for fall town meeting or uh, annual town meeting. But the, uh, the Fitchburg Line Improvement Project is just completing um, now. There is a chance now to uh, coordinate some of with the um, landscaping that is being done as part of the uh, project. There's also t a possibility of um, coordinating uh, with the, um, the construction of the uh, and planning for the Eskimo River Rail Trail parking, which is going to be on MBTA land, um, just on the other. Actually, if I go to back a second, the, um, the rail trail parking is up just on the other side of the second platform there. Um, and it um, it would be great if uh, we were able to catch next year's growing season uh, by doing landscaping. So uh, do we have permissions and things to do this? Yes, the MBTA um, project team has uh, said that we can do landscaping on MBTA property. So all the, all the places that we would do landscaping are either on town property or MBTA um, property. That the, where the bike trail parking lot would be is also MBTA property. Uh, we do have to run the plan uh, before them, uh, sorry, by them before we go uh, do the landscaping itself because um, they have certain rules about um, what can be planted near the tracks, things like that. And so um, they really agree that we can do this as long as they approve the plan. Um, uh, I just uh, mentioned uh, that the, the, all the places that we would be doing the landscaping are either on um, town property or um, uh, MBTA, or within the MBTA right away. So basically either side of the platform or behind the platform. Um, this is just a, a view of uh, from back towards uh, Jones Tavern from th this this area. That's um, uh, this all, all this here is the new south side entrance to the the station platform, and over here to the right and off the off the end of the picture is where the the, the bike trail parking lot will be. Um, uh, th there was a. Um, pro bono, if you will, conceptual design for um, by a, a, a local landscape architect just for SATSAC to be able to get a ballpark estimate for costs. Um, the, the design is not exact for a number of, uh, of reasons, but the, the design was uh, a, enough to, um, to, to base an amount of money for the, 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 the Warren article. This is the, what the, the design looks like. Um, uh, again, this is not exact because all the things pictured here are not uh, always on the right piece of property, and there um, um, there are other things that have changed since this was was done. Um, but if, if this is the angle that c comes in from um, uh, Jones Tavern, and the, the circles are where um, various piece, pieces of uh, various trees or uh, other pieces of landscaping uh, could, could go. Again, this is just a conceptual design. Um, part of the, um, uh, the, the money, should this uh, article be approved, is uh, would be, need to be spent on a final design. That's all I have. I have to answer any questions. Thank you. I'd like to follow that up, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Briefly, um, about 
about six or seven years ago that he, this is a hundred million dollar project along the whole line to double track the line. The concept was to get a train from Pittsburgh into Boston at uh, less than an hour. Um, people are now taking the train in. You can get from Acton to Boston in about 45 minutes, which is incredible. And they got a schedule to go with that. The T rolled out of uh, uh, Congressman Olver got federal money. This is all federal money, this whole construction along the entire line um, from Congressman Olver's efforts. Um, and uh, the T rolled out a design six or seven years ago that created an enormous uproar in town. It was originally a durable type of maze structure that had ramps leading up uh, to a, an overpass to a central platform, no access from the south side at all. Uh, through an enormous effort from a lot of people in town, hundreds of hours of work, including uh, Jen Benson and Jamie Eldridge, uh, we were able to get the team to turn itself around and invest more money into this. The Historic District Commission was, was involved in, in the final design of the station. We've been out there recently. It's a remarkable achievement uh, based on what the T first rolled out. Uh, that's a long time ago. So we've come a long way without the town investing any money at all other than the efforts of other <coughs> citizens. Um, the, the train is really part of the DNA of Acton. It came in the 1840s. The road used to put uh, slaves uh, on the Underground Railroad on the train in, in, uh, in the country going north. Uh, so uh, to make this investment, uh, I think, is uh, a good idea for the town to uh, ensure that the station um, is compatible with the neighborhood around it uh, eventually. Uh, you talk about when town meetings are called. I mean, there are reasons why we, we put certain articles on special town meetings. If we didn't have that town meeting in August, we wouldn't own the Kennedy property and, and the Walker property on Main Street. We'd still be in litigation. And there was a real possibility that we would lose that litigation. And, and Walker would have built this property that majority of people in town didn't want to have. So that's why we called the town meeting in office. This, this uh, is necessary now in order to coordinate with the T's work, which will begin in the spring. If we wait till the April town meeting, money that would be appropriated then wouldn't be available until uh, July, the fiscal year of 17, and we lose uh, a growing season and wouldn't be able to start uh, the work until uh, the spring of 17 when the T would have already put in all of that work and um, we'd lose the opportunity to work all of their work. So that's why it's on the agenda. What, what's the status of the second track? It's done. Well, it's done? As, as, of, as, of, as of this weekend, it's done, but not open. And that does, they should be running trains on the second track, maybe even the last weekend of the month. Uh -huh. So will there be more times, or will it be like more express trains, or what will it be? Uh, they'll be probably adding one more train um, uh, a day. Um, the times, and, and, and the, there'll be a new schedule, which will be go up it, probably in December, uh, though it could be a little bit later, but probably December, which uh, the times from Acton to Porter will be under half an hour for the fastest express train. 20, 27 minutes, I think. I think they're adding another train going out, going out. Yeah, they're going to add the train. I believe there's one more train net out and in a day in the new schedule. It wasn't just the second track. They, they, the problem was the, the, the curves in the track. The this. trains couldn't go over 60 miles an hour. They're that's capable of going 80. So they straightened out all those curves. There were serious problems with signals. The engineer had to look out the window to check the red light or the green light, they now have signals that are in the train that allow the trains to go much faster. So so those help in terms of the time. Okay. So Roland? How much are we talking? Is, 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 the article so doesn't I tell you that, anything. So the, 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 the result of um, the, this uh, landscape architect's uh, work, uh, he estimated $160,000 for this. Um, uh, and then to do the real plan for it, it SATSEC estimated 25000 and so we came up with the, the, the amount to put in the motion of $185,000. 185, 185. 185. Mr. Chairman? Who's going to do the upkeeping of the landscape? And <coughs> in perpetuity, who's going to pay for that? That would be, uh, would fall into municipal properties. They do the, they do the, maintenance of what is down around the uh, 
parking lot now. Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Do I have a second? Approval of what? $185,000 we're talking about? Yeah. Are we article approving eight, a dollar at, amount? At article 8, uh, entitled Fund South Acton Train Station Landscaping in the amount of $185,000. Second. Mr. Chairman, where is the money coming from? Good question. <laughs> where is it coming from? Whose pocket is going to be open to, to get $185,000 on it? The warrant artist is going to have to say something. It's going to be free cash. Free cash. Free cash. You're going to put that in your free cash shoes for for uh, the ALG. In other words, this is so important that all the trucks that you normally don't buy are less important than this kind of thing. Okay. And with all due respect to my colleague at the far end of the table. He was so concerned about spending $125,000 on the factory, but he's willing to spend $185,000, for which there is maybe no economic return for the town. Well said, Bob. That's all I can say. Okay, can I ask a question? Um, Jason? Jason? What percentage of the population actually uses this train station in act? How what percent of the of the active population to. actually uses this train station? You know, I, I don't know a percentage of the active population. Although, given some time, I could probably make a, a guess. I mean, at, at the percentage of the entire population is probably a little little low. However, um, it's very Acton act, act yeah. is the busiest station on the line, except for North Station itself. Even busier than Porter Square and Cambridge. Yeah. Well, hundreds of people take the train in and out every day from Acton. Very busy. Um, yeah, you try to find a parking space. So that's um, the question. Don't we have? Do, uh, aren't there revenues from parking? Uh, I, that, that's the question I was going to ask. And, and if I, could, I don't know whether there is the, the there is a parking lot fund, and I I assume that it, it, um, that at least part of this would be legal to use for landscaping, at least the stuff around the parking lot. Yeah, if there, we used are, it, if we used it in the past to buy police cars, could we buy use it to do landscaping at the? And that would be more of a use it. The people that use it fee, pay the fee to sustain it, rather than it being a, a town-wide responsibility. Yeah, yeah, that free cash. certainly makes makes sense to me. And that's the question I was going to ask: whether the the parking lot fund currently has the money, and whether it's a legal use. So, uh, in the terms of how the warrant article is going to come to the town next week, are you going to say free cash or are you going to say from the parking lot fund? Because that actually, I'll be honest, sways my vote. Well, we're, we're going to have to look at the parking lot fund because there are commitments coming out of it. We, we are putting new meters down that will be in the spring that's coming out. Um, Was that approved to you? To you ago? Funds for the kind of the uh, uh, subsidy of the shuttle okay. out of there. Yeah. <coughs> they've been pulling, up, they've been pulling money out of there. We uh, currently have a five-year plan. Uh, that we just completed our town meeting. Yeah, they're pulling money out of it to support the shuttle over transportation service. Could accommodate this, or if it goes bust, we're losing our time. Yeah. Probably they're always going to be. There's been some delay with the installation of the new meters, which right now, um, you know, I think it's going to pull off one whole spring, so that's going to delay that somewhat. So we have not found it yet, so we're going to have to go back and probably reconstruct it and move forward to see how this plays out. And some of the bike lockers are over 20 years old now, they're getting to the end of the year. Rowan? Wasn't the new parking meters appropriated several years ago at town meeting, from what I recall? Right. And the thing is, in order to, I mean, Everything had been kind of done in sequence because of, of the train station. I, I understand that, but I believe the money's already been appropriated for the right. meters, so been then. Expended, so it's still in the fund. Right, so then. The fund is still so it's committed to the committed meters. To and it's still sitting in the parking lot fund right now that's right. that we're still collecting on. Because yeah. I know we do have several parking that the meters are gone, so we're not getting rid of even those every day. Yeah. So my wife just parked at one right. not that long ago, and several that are broken. And Did it take it? No. I said, get a ticket. Broken, the meter's gone. So I mean, I would behoove the town to put in a short-term solution and put that meter in there at least over the winter to collect the revenue. But no. sure. so um, unfortunately, because the General station terms. itself was delayed, some of these 
fixes have been delayed. There's this whole sequence of, of things. And after the train station is done, there has to be a parking lot reconfiguration, a little bit of a parking lot reconfiguration before we change the meters, and then and then put it put in the new metering system. Um, at, at that point, there's a discussion, and I think Seth said we yeah. recommended the selectmen that we have an increase in the parking fees. Um, uh, so at the time we put in the new metering system. I would also suggest upgrading the lighting there too, do with LEDs and make it a little bit more. Yeah, so Satsak well, has also discussed uh, that um, the lighting there is actually very good, but it leaks light um, to the side for the neighbors around the, the station. And so um, we've been um, working with the, uh, the town engineer and to get estimates for and, uh, uh, you know, the new style down lighting so the light doesn't leak onto the neighbor's property. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, if I just make one comment based on Roland's uh, comment on the parking meters, just so people have an understanding. If we had replacement meter heads, we'd be putting them down there, but right now the company that supplied us with them no longer has the parts of the components, so as they keep breaking, and right, so the idea was to try to get the new meters in there as soon as possible right. to accommodate the broken meters, but because there has been some delays, we thought it would be best to get the parking lot all done and then in the spring uh, install the new meter system. We could do it now in the fall, but the problem is it did have to be in a temporary place and then we'd have to move them from the temporary place and put them in the permanent place in the in the spring so right. yeah we've uh, you know, we've been well aware that the, the meters not have been an issue and a problem I mean we deal with them all the time right. in, in the tax collector's office because we sell the, the cards and this you know we have issues with them but frankly that's the problem right now that technology is gone and there's no replacements <laughs> for those so I think thank the you meters will allow people to pay by their phones right oh, <laughs> So enjoy the free space for now. My phone doesn't have an app, so I guess I can't use mine. Uh, I'm Dick O'Brien. I'm uh, uh, I represent the Water District and moderator of the Water District. So I was very interested in the uh, special tax assessment discussion uh, for that property, but uh, I'm also the backup moderator. It turns out for this meeting, if uh, <laughs> it turns out that we do in a few days, uh, so we'll see how that all goes. But uh, I want to comment on the. Uh, assessment here, uh, this, this investment, I think. Um, I've lived in Acton for 50 years. Uh, I can't believe I'm this old, but uh, <laughs> it turns out that uh, I watched the school district grow uh, because of the, the women who taught and the men who joined and allowed them to come from Cambridge to give us a school system that had the leverage and the experience that we suddenly were able to take advantage of. Uh, and I thought about the um, tax assessment as another chapter in what we're thinking. Uh, you know, this company uh, has become a technology company and it can't do it in air, but it might do it in Acton because people from Cambridge can come to Acton very easily. Uh, and I think we have to think in those terms. I, I share, and by the way, I admire your discussion today. I think you guys have really looked at something very carefully, and I particularly understand the tax assessment is an issue uh, and for recruiting. It uh, doesn't work for the state very well sometimes, and it sure as hell isn't going to work for us in the community all the time. So we need, we need to look at that carefully. But I think in terms of the, 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 uh, the uh, investment in the, in the uh, train uh, and its station, uh, this is really important. Uh, it's important uh, part of what we offer. It's important attachment or an assessment, or not an assessment, but an incentive for us to present a community in a, in a workplace that uh, makes a lot of sense. I certainly hope you will work uh, favorably on that. Steve? Um, I'll look favorably on it in April, but for tonight, <laughs> no. <laughs> Margaret? So I, um, like Jason, I think I would be much more interested in supporting this if I knew that the monies were coming from the parking lot fund, um, because that's a place, that's money that, you know, is limited in how it can be spent, as we've talked about. Um, and so, but otherwise, I feel like, you know, coming out of free cash and just the whole discussion we've had about budgeting, and um, I just don't think it's a, it's a good uh, way for us to operate as a town. So... Um, if we think we can get more information next week, I would be supportive of deferring our vote until next Tuesday. 
not to keep putting things off, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I think you know if there is information like that, you know, and, and it might be something that has you know is a, is is something that we could compromise on and say. Well, there's really not $185,000 that we can spend from the parking lot fund, but we can spend 100000 from it. You know, that kind of a thing, you know, that to, to create a little more comfort. So anyway, that would be what I propose um, to do. Do you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. There's a motion on the floor. Okay. Is that my motion? No, there's already a motion. Oh, there was a motion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was the motion? Uh, who was the motion? The motion was to recommend, I believe. The motion to recommend. Okay. The good discussion is over for that part. Um, all in favor of recommending the article um, eight, the fund South Acton train station landscaping as described in the warrant. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Nay. No. Nay. So. Uh, <laughs> abstentions? <laughs> yeah, I'm an abstention, actually. Two abstentions. <clears throat> Can I make a motion? What okay. happened? I need a count. How many yes. people? <laughs> 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 well, I think we have to do a, 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 a hand count again. Mr. All in favor. I need, a, I, need the, I need the head count. What was the vote? I didn't see all the There was two abstentions. Well, I think we have to vote again. Okay. To get the actual. <laughs> all in favor of approving Article 8 to fund the South Acton train station landscaping, say aye. Aye. Or raise your hand so we can. Oh, not me. <laughs> you can Put your you. hands up. Two. There's three. If you're raising your hand, yeah, he raises his hand. Three. Your vote counts, Mike. <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> One, two, three. Four. 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 Three, four, and two abstentions. Two abstentions. The motion is not, uh, does not pass. Is there another motion? Move to not recommend the article. Well, isn't okay. that the point? No, not. <laughs> you can defer. That's true. <laughs> so would you please clarify exactly, because I, I, I want to be so completely transparent about this. I'm for it if the money comes from the, from the the parking lot fund, I'm against if it comes from free cash. Well, we don't know the answer to that, so. Yep. So, so that's we're why recommending, like we're saying, as it's written in the article. As it's written, it doesn't even have a number in it. Right, we're, so we're, that's Mr. why we're not, uh, it was rejected. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, do we, can we ask the question if we will have the data about whether or not the parking lot fund can accommodate that, that expenditure by our next meeting on Tuesday? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we defer the final vote on this until we hear from the town. Yeah, there's a motion on the floor, second. not right. Second. Damn. <laughs> well, <laughs> motion was already. That wasn't seconded, so you can rescind your motion if they want to make a motion to defer. You have a motion that has did, one did we recognize her? <laughs> <laughs> I believe she's speaking out of order, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's speaking correctly. I believe she should know better, too. <laughs> So is there a, is there a, a motion to change I, this? Second it is. Jason? I make a motion that we defer a uh, final vote until we hear back uh, uh, where the money is going to come from. To Steve Henderson is that. Second, the motion to okay. No, we have to to motion to reconsider the initial vote. Apparently I didn't oh, get it. Very good. Uh, oh. My apologies for not knowing the parliamentary procedure. <laughs> motion okay. to. So let's vote on the, on the motion that's on the table. Has it been seconded? Which one, Which Steve? No, apparently not. Yeah, I'll second it. <laughs> okay. oh, it's on the table. Yeah. What's on the table? Your, your motion. You we, have, we, have, <laughs> we have just a few questions. Uh, I, just, I just want to comment. Do you need a moderator? <laughs> exactly. I think we might. I think we do at this point. Jeez. Okay. Now, some, well, someone, in order that we know exactly what we're voting on, repeat the motion that... It's Steve's motion. Well, Steve's. let me just... <laughs> Maybe I could talk to my emotions, <laughs> even though it hasn't been seconded. I did second it. Oh, you did second it. Yes. Okay. We may or may not know anything on Tuesday. Right. Um, we can always reconsider on Tuesday if indeed facts are presented that change where the money's coming from. Right. Right. Um, warrants published. Uh, there's no harm in taking a position not to recommend now, we can reconsider on okay. Tuesday if we have more data, but I'm thinking we're not getting more data. 
Okay. If we get it Tuesday, that's one thing. If you don't, something else. You the, 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 the so that's the motion. Uh, we, I mean, the, the, the thing Brian and I can't remember is what commitments have been made. <laughs> so uh, off the top of our heads out of that fund. So we can have that information with you guys on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, is, that, was, that was the motion. Motions to not recommend. Motion to re not recommend. Which, okay. And, Take Roll a vote second on that. it. I second it, correct. All in favor of not recommending Article 8. Say aye. Aye. Opposed. One, two. <laughs> abstentions. <laughs> two. Three. That's Three. Right. <laughs> we gained an abstention. Yeah. Now, can Three I make a motion? Can you make two. your motion? That motion passed. All right. All right. Too late. <laughs> Just as a signal. <laughs> We can, we can moving on. We can make a motion. <laughs> yeah. Margaret, you got to vote against it if you want it to fail. Point of procedure: Don't you need a majority vote to? It's merely a morality. Yeah. If you abstain, you take yourself out of the count. Plus, we Kelly's corner now since we're on that one. The um, yeah. so what's remaining is uh, Article One, Common Core, uh, Citizens Petition. Article Two, which is a uh, Home Rule Petition. Uh, Steve, would you like to address that? Uh, the home, the uh, liquor license quota. Uh, I'll let Mr. Berry address that. <laughs> this has to do. <laughs> Nice. It didn't sound like he was supporting you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I got the candy, so I see. <laughs> this has to do really with the Kelly's Corner improvements that will, uh, that, uh, you know, we've passed over for the room. So I recommend it passing over for this town meeting will be coming forward. The plan is now in the spring. Uh, the new zoning. Uh, Overlay district that Kelly's Corner will be along with the road and infrastructure improvements. Uh, the concept has always been to uh, entice uh, economic growth in the new Kelly's Corner district to have more liquor licenses available in town for new businesses that uh, restaurants obviously uh, that would want to be in the Kelly's Corner district. Uh, you can't obviously restrict liquor licenses to uh, a particular district, so these would be available town-wide. Uh, but the way it works in Massachusetts, the legislature controls the number of, uh, of liquor licenses that each city and town gets uh, to hand out. Um, we have uh, handed out all of the licenses we have now in town. Um, so we want to have more available to entice more businesses to uh, come to town and open up restaurants particularly. Um, uh, and, and that's the sense of this, uh, this uh, warrant article. There's no money involved in it. It requires a home rule petition adopted by town meeting, which then gets filed as a bill in the state legislature. It has to go through the House of Representatives, goes through the state senate, it has to get signed by the, uh, by the uh, governor. Uh, if we waited to April on this particular article, uh, the likelihood is that it would not pass through that whole procedure by July when the legislature ends its two-year session. So uh, that means that it would have to be refiled in January of 17 when the legislature starts up again. Um, and uh, assuming the town meeting would adopt the Kelly's Corner District uh, zoning changes in the spring, we'd like to have these liquor licenses available to uh, to. Uh, entice new businesses to come into the Kelly's Corner District. The other thing that's happening is uh, since there are no licenses available, a business now that, for instance, local table that goes, uh, stops doing business, sells their liquor license to another proprietor, um, they're going for about 180 grand now, which <laughs> obviously would uh, inhibit economic growth. Uh, mm. Uh, and so part of this warrant article says that you can't sell your liquor license. If you go out of business, you've got to give it back to the town. So uh, that's a new twist that I don't 
completely understand Roland has been putting this article together based on uh, Maynard, which, which uh, got a number of extra licenses for the mill complex there and the new um, huge development they're doing down off of Parker Street past the, the high school fields there. And had that in their warrant article. So that concept was to try to um, stop that practice of driving up the cost of liquor licenses so high that it makes it very <laughs> difficult to open a new business to, if you want to sell liquor. <coughs> well, conversely, then, it would, I don't know if it makes a difference, but it would also then, for adding 16 liquor licenses, it would devalue. The existing, the cost of the, the value of the existing liquor licenses. But you're saying this article would make it so you couldn't sell them anyway. Right, but I think, I don't know the way it would work in practice. I think it, that only applies to these new liquor licenses. Oh, so they so would, the would, would still have the ability to sell them. And, and you're right, if you have the opportunity to come and get a new one, why are you going to go out and pay 180 grand right. to buy an existing one? So, so. Mr. Chen. Steve. Um, how many do we have down, Peter? 22. 22. This is 16 new full service liquor licenses, and I believe six just for beer and wine. Okay. There are and a lot of different kinds of licenses, including uh, package stores, obviously. Up so in the Kelly's so Corner. We're asking for any more. What, what's the, I mean, does the state have a, a method for us? Assigning the numbers to towns. Well, first serve. Well, you mean in terms of how they determine the numbers? Yeah. yeah, I mean, is it based on population? Is it based on how many drunks you have? I mean, how? <laughs> based on population, with okay. the exception of Clinton, that must have got grandfathered. Years ago. But um, uh, one of the ironies is that you know we we're talking about the economic development bill when we we're talking about AES. One of the elements that Governor Patrick had put in a year ago was vetoed by the legislature. Now we'll let every every city and town determine their own number. Who hmm. is that? The house. The house. House, yes. We have uh, through surveys around town and, and uh, um, talking to people in planning process and whatever, people continually say we want to see more restaurants in town rather than mm -hmm. challenge for another town to go up. Except for Fogwell. As I understand it, this was stimulated by the walkers? Part of the Walker settlement was uh, that the town would apply for additional liquor licenses. Um, there was no guarantee to Walker that he would get one. Uh, we already had in place a plan as part of this whole Kelly's Corner development to apply for more liquor licenses anyway. So we, we agreed to that with, uh, with Walker as part of that settlement because that was our plan in the first place. And, and he probably assuming he can get his business through zoning and get the permits to start it, he, he is on the list to obtain a liquor license. But I think they're handed out first come, first serve. I think that's my understanding. Or so. With approval. Pardon me? <laughs> to qualified operators. Obviously, yeah. if you meet all the conditions for the license, you have to come before the selectman, <coughs> file an application, pay, pay a licensing fee, meet all the conditions of licensing. ABCC, the state board that governs yeah. all local liquor sales has to approve it um, but if you meet all those conditions you, you get the license can, we can't deny it can we require that they incorporate all the rocks from the old site in the landscaping <laughs> of the new site <laughs> Do you guys have enough time on your agenda for more over-serving here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. There's a bit of irony mixed in here. Yeah. Okay, I, I think we're... <laughs> then, uh, does someone like to make a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain abstentions? It's a vote approved, uh, recommended unanimously. Can I make a comment? Yeah, sure. So I, I support this, and I definitely support it you know, from the economic development piece, you know, even though I personally, on a religious basis, abstain from alcohol. So, but I think, it's, I think it's good, and I, and I support it. But I will just make the comment that it bugs me <laughs> that we kind of are like the Walker folks sort of forced our hand to have this town meeting in the fall now so that we could, you know, they didn't uphold are part of the agreement to them and it just and you know this isn't a criticism of anyone but just more of walker <laughs> because i'm just mad <laughs> um but i just would say you know and i know it was because we thought the Kellis corner stuff was going to come and all of that i totally understand that but you know in the future 
we should just be careful about making promises of timing and all that. So, okay. moving right along, and since we've already had a presentation on the um, stormwater management and erosion and sediment control last week, maybe we can just move to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's uh, recommended unanimously. Which number was that one? So the, I think nine. the only, according to my count, the only one that's left is the nine binding resolution. Mm -hmm. Kelly's Corner. Seven, Kelly's Corner. Seven, one, and three. Oh. Seven. What about three? Do we do Harris Street? Three, we no, didn't we do. do. One, three, and seven. Mr. Oh, Harris, Harris Street. Seven. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Harris Street. Uh, um, I, well, I, uh, I think it was 60 but, uh, rods. Basically, uh, it's pretty, it, you know, it's, it's pretty, it, it almost doesn't have to happen because <laughs> the, uh, oh, we have proof, so we, we have, have proof, well, you know, but you said that you put it on consent, except that it, it's so important. Oh, yeah. The only one, one article consent, consent. yeah. yeah. Basically, it was approved. All the, the elements were approved in, at spring town meeting, and this is just sort of, a, as the town manager says, it's a belt and suspenders approach to making sure that the transaction is all legal. So uh, we're pursuing uh, state legislation to just formally approve uh, what has already been approved at town meeting. So the acquisition of the Harris building and then the swap of land, the town land, for this, this, the state property. So there's no money. There's no money involved in this. Okay. On that basis, I'll move to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? So Harris Street number, article number three is is recommended. Um, next one. victim is uh, Kelly's. Talk about Kelly Corner design, number seven. Article number seven. Aye. Yes. Uh, after we put this on the uh, warrant, uh, the Kelly's Corner Steering Committee met and voted not to uh, support this article. Uh, their plan is to bring the entire uh, design fee to the uh, Springtown meeting. It's like three quarters of a million dollars, so the town is now dealing with that through the budget process. Uh, and the selectmen have voted to pass the recommend to the voters at town meeting that they pass over this article. So uh, it, this, uh, from our so perspective, will not be uh, no accident required on our part. So the, the print in the in the warrant is incorrect. Yeah, because it we have voted to recommend. You recommend? We have voted to recommend it. At our meeting a couple of weeks ago, after that, the Coast Guard Steering Committee indicated that they were not recommending moving forward with it. So at our meeting last night, we voted to rescind that recommendation and instead recommend that town meeting pass over. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I recommend we take no action. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Roland, questions? But I don't think this, I, think, I don't remember the name. Jason. Jason. I don't know that it's really going to be question was answered. Uh, the amount in the article is correct for what was originally asked for and now uh, to be passed over for, was for 25% design. <coughs> Kay, uh, Peter was talking about a quarter million dollars. For three quarters. Three, three quarters of a million dollars coming to the annual town meeting. That is for 100% design construction. So it will be a different different product. But I think your question was to whether the selectmen will recommend it. Correct. Yeah, that is not accurate in the end. Correct. I think well, last night, that's about right. Oh, okay. it was yeah. accurate. I thought, I thought as you were asking about yeah. it. No, it was correct. Right. Right. So, it wasn't okay. well, more information, the mayor. Thank you very much. So, there's a motion <laughs> to, to, take no uh, take no to take no action on um, Article 7 to fund Kelly's Corner design as outlined in the Warren article. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, so it's not rec uh, no recommendation. Uh, that's it. Now, according to my count, now is the only one left is the nine binding uh, resolution, the citizen petition, uh, discontinuation of the Common Core standards. 
Mr. Chairman, I move we take no action. It has, as far as I can see, no financial impact on the town. And it's essentially a, a political statement which citizens may or may not wish to support or oppose. Does I have a second? Second. second. All in favor of taking no action? Let's have a little discussion. <laughs> the board select me take a position on it? We took no action. Do we know if the school committee is going to speak? They are asking to, they have prepared a statement which is available on their website, um, mm -hmm. in their packet, and they are asking the moderator to be able to be allowed to read that statement um, okay. on town meeting. That's fine. I'm good. <laughs> They're asking right now to, if, what we're doing. So <clears throat> we're having a, we're, there is a motion to not recommend. Right. Or to take no action. Take no action. I don't know if that's an odd. Take no action. All in favor of taking no action? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? So we take no action. I think that's it. That's it. Um, do I have a. You want to assign people to articles? Yes. Before we all escape. <laughs> Okay. Anyone like to um, volunteer to take ownership for some of these and to raise your hand, speak out? Don't let everybody jump up at once. <laughs> well, I'll take one. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll take number six. Who's that, Jason? No. That was Doug. Oh, Doug? Hey, you gotta, you got to present the uh, winning view, Doug. I'll take the South Active. Well, no, maybe you want to take. Does Dave, does Dave leave? Well, David can take that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We'll sign that to David. Oh, he left, so he gets assigned. Yeah. He gets them all now. <laughs> uh, number one is, is was. Um, yeah, I'll take Steve. that. Okay. Home rule petitions uh, two and three. I'll take those. Steve. Uh, collective uh, bargaining. If you want me to take number two, I can and just speak to the Kelly's Corner piece of it. No, I probably visit more bars in town than you do, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, the collective bargaining. I'll do the two collective bargaining. So it's four and five is um, Bob. I can do number seven. Seven is Margaret. That's been withdrawn, right? That's been withdrawn. Yeah. So I'll just so. explain why it's. I mean, it's yeah. not withdrawn. I'll just explain. Okay, uh, a bylaw for stormwater. What with the South Acton train station? Well, that we gave that to David. That David. Oh, David. Okay. I think you're you're a bio, you're a stormwater kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I. That's the first thing I, I, that's what I no think when I see rolling. As opposed to, to an erosion or sediment guy. Uh, <laughs> so it's just uh, 11, 12, and thirteen uh, land oh, acquisition. Of Jeff Climber. What about 10 minute man? No, oh, 10 minute man. I, I can take that. Who's got nine? Roland. 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 Exciting. It's Mr. Stormwater. The land acquisition. Stormwater falls, it runs off. Did we give anything to Jason yet? Uh, <laughs> we can just raise the hand. Or, or shoot you. I mean, you just have to speak to it and just explain our position. Is Dave doing a special tax yeah, assessment? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you in those well, ones you wouldn't have to say that's anything. That's what you say. You just say deferred. Okay. So which one do you he's want? Before. He's, he's uh, locked to vote. Uh, 11, well, you could do, uh, okay. 11, 12, how about that? You can get, you'll get some of this flavor. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> so Shu Yu has 11, 12 is Jason. Oh. Okay. Shu Yu, take 11 and 12, I'll take 13. Yeah. Okay, Shu Yu. And then Jason is number 13. 13. Lucky, Lucky 13. 13. Hey, you beat me too. Okay. Who's got number 10? Mike. 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 I do. Unless you want to take it, Doug. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just trying to fill up my, for the minutes. 
so we have nothing on but number I think one. It's next no, number one was Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> <I'm getting quite. laughs> it's okay. I'm not that do we have one for, uh, okay, you're doing Kelly's Corner, that's right. Margaret. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, then the official list, at least as I have it, is that number one is Steve, number two and number three are Steve. Um, Bob Evans is on four and There's five. five. Um, I've got six, uh, Margaret has seven. Um, David has, has eight. Uh, the, tr the train station. Is David. And Roland has number nine, Stormwater. Right. Beautiful. Uh, number 10 is Mike, uh, number 11 and 12 are Shu Yu, and number 13 is Jason. Is that correct? That sounds correct. good to me. Right. Now, our, our next meeting, I don't think we have, do you have any meeting, minutes to discuss? I think we're on time. Or can we defer them? Until our next meeting, yeah. Okay. Um, so next meeting will be the town meeting. So we have to meet, agree on the time to meet before town meeting. If there are any issues that we have to discuss, are there? I think be. I think we need to discuss the point of view. Okay. Because we need to get that document worked through, and I can once we voted on that, I can draft a summary because the following week is when we go to two schools. So we need right. to get that taken care of. Oh, so I think we need I to have do to that. Talk to you about that. So um, at six o'clock. Plus, if they do provide more data on the yeah, South African might be train late. station, yeah, something piece. could come up. So, oh, so. but you do have to. Um, Most likely, gonna be late. They'll probably give you a room, but you have to post an agenda. Okay. Do <laughs> I have to ask for a room too? Yeah. Probably it wouldn't hurt, but you have to post an agenda. So what time? What time? Seven? Uh, six? six so Town meeting starts at seven. Yeah, seven. Six? Is that enough time? Yes. Yeah. Six o'clock. And since. It's, uh, and, and, and since there's a holiday around, I would make sure we, you know when you have to post the agenda. Right. <laughs> well, well holiday's next day, though. <laughs> holiday's the next day. I, I don't know how they count those 48 uh, hours. <laughs> I so never Brian, have do understood. you think we can have that information <laughs> about the, the um, you might as well fun? Post it tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> we meet on Thursday, Mark. We're going to look at that for Great. Do we have a motion from you? Uh, I motion to adjourn until uh, 6, 6 p.m. Yeah. next Tuesday. Do you have a second? Uh, second. All Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Meeting adjourned. Like Thank you. Historically